okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, today is Thursday, you guys, which means that it is Mother Trucking Vlog Day. And yeah, I got a full-on action-packed vlog for you guys planned out tonight. For anybody watching on the replay, all of the timestamps are gonna be the first pinned comment right underneath this video. But uh, I already, look, I say this a lot. I think we're gonna be running long. I just have a feeling that there's going to be some hot running long action. Let me do a quick rundown for you guys. First of all, thank you so GD much for showing up tonight. I always say this Thursday is my favorite day of the week, and I really appreciate you guys being here with me. Uh, my birthday is coming up, so we got a little bit of a birthday vlog tonight. It's not just my birthday coming up. It is uh, Mr. Beecher Coil Turd's birthday on the same day as mine, and today is our very own Eric Vinyl and Vapor's birthday as well. April is kind of a banger month for birthdays. So we're going to be singing happy birthday uh, just a little bit uh, just a little bit later on. Is it weird if I sing happy birthday like to myself? Is that like a is that like a sad move? I feel like that's kind of like a sad move to just sing happy birthday to myself. That's fine. Look, I, I'll sing happy birthday to myself. I don't mind. Let me do that quick uh, rundown for you guys. Um, I definitely have a beer and some what I've been vaping. Of course, those are staples. We have multiple retro vapes tonight. I had so much fun last week doing like two retro vapes that I don't know. I just... We decided we're doing two retro vapes tonight. Um, I definitely have a very random liquid tasting as well. Uh, what did I say? Double retro vape. I got some mail, and I think I have in this mail are my my parents' um, birthday gifts for me. I know for sure, for sure, 100% that my dad's birthday gift is here, and I'm going to open it tonight in the mail but I think my mom's gift might be in there as well, which I'm really excited about. And I have a huge box from Reload Vapor. Yeah, just a huge honking box from Reload Vapor. I'm a little bit of a Reload Vapor fanboy and just the sight of that name on the box, Reload Vapor. I was just instantly, I'm, I was all a, I was all a Twitter. Um, before we get too far into this vlog, it's already too late for that. It's already too late for that. I don't believe it's Michelle Lynn's birthday, but it could be. But what I want to do right now is uh, that thing. That's my new favorite thing, bro, where I get to hear from one of my subscribers. So right now, I, it's Lethal Coils. What you doing, Lethal Coils? Hey, Grim. How's it going? Happy vlog day. And uh, yo, yo, my friend. Hey, it's Chris. Lethal Coils here. And uh, we're out at the pond right now. You can tell I'm a little bit dressed up for the winter time. We got plenty of snow all around us. But I remember last time I was in chat and I mentioned ice skating. You said you wanted to go. So we're gonna do something special for you right now, Grim. And we're gonna take you ice skating once around the, uh, the pond here. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. That's that's cool. This is all I've ever wanted to do. Sorry. There you go, Grim. I've just brought you ice skating. I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, yeah, again, happy vlog day. Love you, brother. Peace. Yeah, fuck yeah, Chris. Lethal coils. Bro, that's all I've ever wanted to do. I've never been. Look, I've been ice skating. I wouldn't say I was good at it. I did some inline skating, you know, rollerblades in the 90s, as I think everybody did in the 90s. But the idea of being in like a small, like northeastern town on a lake with snow and ice skating, give it to me. That's, give it to me. That's what I want to do. Appreciate that video, Chris, Lethal Coils. If anybody else out there has a video, you know, you don't have to go ice skating for me. You can do literally anything else. I'd love to see them. Send them on over to me, nick at grimgreen.com. Just mark your subject. That one thing, chances are I'll see it. I'll, I'll, I'll see it and I'll download the attachment and we can feature it in this here vlog video. But uh, yeah, fuck yeah, Chris, that's cool. I hope you take advantage of that just as often as you can just as often as you can, Chris. Um, 
I want to drink some beer right now. Before we get to any Super Chats, I do want to get open this beer. I got a beer, yo yo to ya, dim lit night. We got one from uh, New Glarus tonight. Let's have some beers. Is that too loud? Is that bumper too loud? Man, I feel like that bumper's too loud sometimes. I, I got to get control over the volume of my bumpers. This is this is getting ridiculous. What are you new here? So what do we got tonight? Well, this is from New Glarus Brewing. This is the Two Women Lager. Came from uh, I wrote I scribbled his name on there. Dim. This comes to us uh, from Dim Lit Night, sir. Hope you're getting to feeling uh, much better, much better. Birthday beers, Beecher. Happy birthday, Beecher. Holy shit! If Beecher's here, let's just sing Happy Birthday to Beecher right now. I don't know if Eric's gonna be here tonight, but it's his actual birthday. Did anybody text Eric? Beecher, text Eric and tell him to get here so that we can sing Happy Birthday to him. That's what I really want to do. This is the beer, though. We're going to taste this right now. As I said, came to us from uh, Dim Lit Night, and this is a beer. You know, you can't really get this outside of where it's, uh, you know, brewed. But Beer Advocate says this is the collaboration of two craft companies, both led by women, New Glarus Brewing and Ware, Ware Man Malting. I'm not saying that right. Uh, is unique. You hold the result. Two women, a classic country lager brewed with Weinerman's floor malted bro Brohemian malt and Harletu Mittelfruch tops. Poonsauce, what does any of that mean? You're my resident beer expert now. What does Moodlefrutal hops mean? I don't know what that means. It says it's a tempting and graceful classic lager only found in Wisconsin. <sighs> Yeah, right. Thanks to uh, Mr. Dimlet Knight. Now we're drinking this beer in uh, we're drinking this beer in California. Pouring it into my Grim Army uh, pint glass. These are all sold out. I apologize. Oh, look at that! It's clear. Look at that! It's like a clearish uh, lager. Can you see my face behind it? <laughs> okay, maybe not. Stop goofing off, Nick. Just drink the damn beer. New Glarus. I'm excited about this because as it says, this is a beer that you really can only generally get in Wisconsin. And because I have great people that I know across the country, I get to try some, uh, I get to try some pretty unique beers that I wouldn't otherwise normally get to try. So thank you, Dimlet Night. Cheers, you guys. Hope you got something delicious next to you. Yeah, that's amazing. I could drink a hundred of these. This tastes like uh this tastes like a summertime, crispy, crispy lager. A little bit malty, no sour, no bitter, nothing. Just a hair of like upfront sweetness, but it's really more of like a, I don't know, like a weedy, like a wheat sweetness. So it's not sweet like sugar, I guess. It's more sweet like, a, I, I can't even, like honey, I guess. Honey w would be a, a little bit better of example of the sweetness that I'm getting from this, but... It's crazy sessionable. I could drink this. I could drink this all day. I could drink this all day in the car. That's delicious. It's completely delicious. I have a Turkish cream MTL that I think is going to pair really well with this. Boosh, if anybody's drinking a beer tonight in the chat, what are you drinking? I would like to know, for one. In fact, if you're watching this on the replay and you've got a frosty beer next to you, let me know. <laughs> let me know what you're drinking. Cheers. Yeah, that's great. That's great. That's fantastic. This is one of those beers. It's one of those like really easy drinking sessionable beers that, whoa, easy. I was waving my hands around. Do you see that dollop went right on my keyboard? Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Really sessionable, easy drinking beer. I could see myself sitting outside in like a donut pool floaty in the nude, obviously in my swimming pool, just with this beer in my hand. This is what summer, this is what summer tastes like to me right here. Whiskey Casey shuffle. That sounds good. What's up, Bernard? How are you? Coffee and white hot chocolate. 
living that uh, luxurious life over there, Mr. Playick. So, uh, yeah, that's some beer. Let's sit here and sip on this beer while we knock out a couple of these super chats. Okay, so there were two super chats that were pre-stream that I didn't get to. Uh, I didn't get to. I didn't get to do them. So there was Christopher Hood said, "Happy birthday, Graham Green! Second time making it to a vlog. First time as a cool kid. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Christopher! Yo yo to you, bro. Let me be the first. Let me be the first to wish you a very welcome uh, yo yo. And there was another super chat. I I frantically took screen captures when I saw that they had disappeared. Ohms Chaser Coil says, yo, yo, Nick, happy, okay, let's zoom in on this, happy birthday for TBT. It's also my birthday on TBT, so it's kind of a twinsy day, and I couldn't think of anyone better right now to be sharing a birthday with. Fuck yeah, happy birthday, Ohms Chaser Coils. We got some uh, we got some birthdays happening in the chat right after these super chats. Oh, dude, it's gonna be happy birthday time! Like you can't even imagine. You can't even imagine. Uh, this one came from uh, Christopher, I believe. Uh, no, no, this is uh, this is Ohm's Chaser Coils here. Uh, it's only it's only just gone lunchtime here in New Zealand, but I'll share a beer with you because why not? Happy birthday, bro! Fuck yeah, fuck yeah! Happy birthday, bro! I'll drink to that. Baby does watching in VR. Whoa, what's that like? How's that cool? Does it look like a big floating screen in front of you like you're in the cinema, like you're at the theater? Enjoy, baby doe. Appreciate you being here, man. Uh, Mr. Fuzzle says happy birthday. Thank you. Good Lord. Happy birthday. That's what we're celebrating tonight. Um, Michelle Lynn, thank you for bringing Sabine into my life. I'm in love. Also, happy birthday, buddy. I think you got a present. I think you got the present part backwards, though. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe. It's okay. Michelle Lynn, our very own Michelle Lynn Dulldime, um, staple of the community, fellow Yo Yo A Cool Kids Club member. Uh, me and another, we, me and uh, Will from Steel Valley Vapors, we kind of conspired and we bought Michelle Lynn a gift. And I, and I really hope you're excited about it. Sabine is its name. Sabine. I love it. Chris Cullen. Hey, Grim, as you know, I sent you a vinyl. I didn't realize it arrives around your birthday. So it's a birthday gift from me. Pull the vinyl out. Trust me. Damn, Chris Cullen, I will. It's not here yet, but I appreciate that, man. Thank you. That's very cool of you. You didn't have to do that. Baby Doe, uh, get your parents to watch the stream while you unbox their gifts, Grim Boy. Yeah, I know. In fact, here, let me give... I don't... I can... My dad sometimes... My dad usually watches the stream, and I told him that on Thursday I was going to be opening the gift. I haven't texted him yet today but I'm assuming that he, he's here watching. He might not be. I don't know. At least I'll send him the replay. And my mom was supposed to be here tonight too, but I don't know that her gift is actually here yet. So it's whatever. Look, this is going to be, uh, this is going to be great either way. Level five, Loki, yo, yo, happy birthday. Can you use a 510 drip tip on the Delrin cap of the Azeroth? I put one. On, oh, really? You can use a 510 drip tip on the top of the Azeroth? Really? All right, I've been rocking that Azeroth pretty hard. Uh, Ohm Chaser, cheers, bro. Cheers to ya. The Endless Black Ribbon, happy birthday, Nick. What is, that is a, what a dark name. Just sounds like despair. Just sounds depressing. James Bell, uh, yo, Grim, happy birthday, man. Buy yourself a beer, whatever you want with this birthday gift. I'm vaping on the original MVV from Dovpo with the Dead Rabbit RDA and some PB and Jam. Vape it. Sounds sick. Enjoy it. Thank you. Vape and Case. Uh, I sent you a little birthday song for that one thing. So anyway, happy birthday, Nick and Beecher. Okay, you know what? The time has come. Do you want to sing happy birthday? It's time. We're right here, right in the middle of the Super Chats. Beecher, you out there? Listen up, buddy, because I'm going to sing you happy birthday. This is for Beecher. This is for Eric. Uh, this is for anybody that celebrates a birthday today or, or, or maybe like within the next six days. That's kind of, you know, the range of this song. That's how far it can go. Uh, hang on. I don't have my, uh, I don't have my Apple pencil to conduct the orchestra. Happy birthday to you, Beecher. Happy birthday to you, Beecher and Eric, and kind of me a little bit as well. Happy birthday to you guys and me a little bit. Happy birthday to 
you. <laughs> happy birthday, Beecher. Happy birthday, Eric. Happy birthday, Grim Green. I told you, it's, it's going to be a party tonight. We're just hanging out. Um, thank you, Vape and Case. Zach, Pizza Beard, let's leave off here. Hey, guys, happy early birthday, buddy. Love you. Well, I love you too, Zach. Appreciate you, Pizza Beard. Cheers, buddy boy. Well, let's just keep going. Tribal Buddha says, happy birthday, bro. I'm stoked my dead goat combo kit and two bottles of bake arrive tomorrow. Awesome. Vape it, bro. I, I really hope you enjoy those liquids. Fishy. Fishy, happy birthday to Grim and Beecher. You guys are both beyond awesome. Cheers to both of you. Fishy, that is so very gracious of you, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Halo Clouds. Whoa, Halo Clouds in with the big super chat. Hey there, some pesos uh, as my gift for your birthday. Don't spend it all in one place. Not true. It's like $3. I know. Hey, it's cool. I still really appreciate it. I don't know if I can get... Do you think I could request that YouTube send me actual like Mexican pesos? Do you think I can request that? Because I would like to have that. That would mean so much more than like, here, have some Mexican pesos, and then it's going to get converted, and then it's just going to become like a credit in your account. I want the pesos. Damn it, I want them. Okay, Derek, happy birthday, Grim Beecher and Eric. It's freaking everyone's birthday, Derek. Everyone's birthday. All right, we're going to pick back up with the Super Chats in just a hot minute because I want to tell you guys just a little bit about what I've been vaping, and it has gotten out of control. What I've been vaping has just got out of control because I have that sickness where I like to just set things up, and I do it when I don't need to. That's the <laughs> I look across my desk, and I go, okay, you've got like eight RTAs going right now, five drippers going right now, four sub tanks going right now. You should definitely set up another RTA, Grim Green. And I'll just listen to myself and I'll do it. And it's dumb. So technically, okay, techni <laughs> technically, yes, this is everything that's on my desk right now. If we're going to do a quick rundown from left to right, that's a Def Mods with the 40 millimeter Valhalla. That's a Def Mods with the 40 millimeter Trilogy XL. That's the Geek Vape Obelisk. That is the gen, right next to that is the gen with the triple coil Azeroth from the Monday build stream in it. Still vaping that. It's the V200 with the rye and then a, uh, a ska flavored DHD drip tip. That's the Aegis Boost Pro with the 510 connection and the QP Juggernaut MR on it. Got the Whirl S still hanging around. The Abyss with the Ether bridge on the inside. That's an Axis Vapes M17 right next to it with the Profile Mesh on top. That is the Thelema DNA 250C with the Reload Vapor S RTA on top. That is the Argus right next to it. And next to that is the Mando Recoil Combo. Now, if you're asking me, like, hey, Grim, pick three things that you've actually been vaping, not pictured, it's the Mix K-Fun Combo. I'll never get enough of this. This is this is it. I'm going to buy more mixes and just use them with mixes and K-Funds, and I want mixes and K-Funds all over the place. That's been heavily getting vaped. The Abyss. The Abyss. I like that I have the Abyss with a wicked battery in it. That cracks me up. But it's the Abyss with the Ether Bridge in there. This is the uh, Abyss. You know, this is the Ether Bridge that works in the Abyss, not the one that works in the billet box. It's just super, I mean, really, really restricted. Bang and flavor, though. And if you're going to ask me really what I've been using, I have been using this more often than I would honestly care to admit. It's a big, ridiculous vape. It's that Def Mods Guar box with the 40 millimeter uh, Trilogy XL RTA on there. It's filled up with baked banana cream beauty. Let me unlock it. Yeah, I mean, it's 120 watts. This is the this is the most I've ever vaped, like the highest wattages I've ever consistently vaped. This is the biggest RTA I've consistently vaped. I uh, I just can't I just can't not enjoy this vape. Oh, it's so good. This is a banger of an RTA. We just did a build stream for this on Monday, the build and chill. Uh, and it's been great. The Whirl S has been getting a surprising amount of use. And I really like this Geek Vape Aegis Boost with a 510 connection on it and a little single coil banger RTA. That QP Juggernaut MR fits on here perfectly. It's the perfect little compact banger. I've just, this is something I've really been enjoying. This is uh, Smacks Lick It, except it's not called Lick It anymore. In fact, it's not called anything anymore because Smacks is closed. 
But that is a really, really good RTA, and it, it's plenty powerful. Like this is a 0.2, 55 watts, single 18650. It's it's more it's more than you need for a single coil, you know. Just a really good RTA. I'm a big fan of QP, and I like their RTAs. I'm a big fan of Vaprix Cloud, and I like this big ass RTA. And the level of crackle that I'm getting from those coils is uh, is insane. And then, yeah, like I said, the Whirl S, I don't want to say it's like dethroned. I can't say it's dethroned the Vupu V through because this is still my favorite pod. I've just been using the Whirl S a lot lately. The Vupu Vinci didn't dethrone this, uh, but I did get the, v the Vaporesso Lux Q. And these have kind of been going head to head a little bit, you know? I'm surprised. I don't think, I can't say right now, I don't think it's going to dethrone it, but I'll have a review for this pod soon. And of course, I'm going to compare it directly to the V3, which is my favorite pod. But that's really, that's really what I've been vaping. My mission. So here's a little bit of news as well. <laughs> I got to lose the bubble glass. Pan, don't boss me around. I like the bubble glass. I've grown to enjoy bubble glasses and I cannot believe I'm saying this. Mark this date down, dude. April 1st, 2021, Grim Green. <sighs> I've been using a vape band. I know, I know. I've been using a vape band. This RTA with the bubble glass on it needs a vape band. When it falls, it fell on the countertop the other day. And remember my abyss fell on the countertop, broke the button. This fell on the countertop, bounced off of that little vape band and saved my bubble glass from being broken. And I went, okay, I get it now. Okay, cool. I get it now. I definitely get it now. I'm using a vape band. I don't know what's going on anymore. The whole world's gone topsy-turvy. But let me give you guys a little bit of a heads up for next week. So my birthday is actually on Tuesday. It's April 6th. I'm turning old. And I'm just taking next week off mostly uh, from, from streaming, at least on YouTube. There's not going to be a Monday build stream. There's not going to be a TBN next week. And there's not going to be a vlog next week. No streaming on YouTube. I am going to be hanging out with my patrons. I'm going to be streaming with them most of the week. But I'm taking a little bit of a break next week just because it's my birthday and just because fucking I'm tired. <laughs> I'm just tired. And so I'm going to take a, a week off of streaming, but we'll be back the very next week. Don't even trip. In fact, I have a lot of really cool things planned coming up. Um, Alex Norcia slid into my DMs and I think we're going to be recording a, a little podcast together episode soon coming up. Alex Norcia is you know, an amazing author. He, he's, he's written for Vice Magazine. He's written for the New York Times and now he writes for Filter. But I think I'm going to have him on on a podcast. We're going to be doing some series stuff for the build stream. So anyway, next week I am, I'm a ghost. I am Casper. I'm gone. I'm out of here. I'm not going to be on YouTube. I will only be on, you know, Discord, Patreon, Yo Yo Cool Kids Club. So that's where we're going to be. That's my birthday present to myself is that I'm not going to, I'm not going to stream. I'm going to spend the week cleaning my office. I got a little bit of office remodeling to do for the most part. I would honestly just like to have some shed time, lay in bed and watch Godzilla movies. Like that's going to be my main plan for the week and no spoilers. I haven't seen Kong v Godzilla yet. Don't ruin it for me. No spoilers. No spoilers. Okay. So Holy crap, where where are we? Where did we where did we even leave off? I have some shout outs that I wanted to actually do real quick before we get to any news and advocacy. Um, comments of the week, comments of the week, comments of the week, comments of the week, comments of the week. I had a few comments um, that I don't I don't remember if I shared these last week, and even if I did, fuck it, I'm sharing them again. Sainted. Serenity left this comment and said, I think we should all take a page out of Scientology's book and every vapor should fax all those documents showing scientific proof to our elected officials offices weekly in case they forget. And maybe us uh, ex-smokers should file lawsuits. Let's all stop being nice and using logic and science and start being pains in the ass. What are they going to do? Stop us from vaping and criminalize it? 
It's kind of already on the horizon. <sighs> I'm not generally a big fan of like uh, militant approaches to things and and like guerrilla sort of uh, warfare like that, but I personally love this idea. <laughs> it struck a chord with me instantly. I kind of went, yeah, enough is enough. Why aren't we weekly faxing science to senators? Why aren't we week? Why aren't we daily emailing and faxing studies and science to Congress people? Could be something for the future. I mean, if this could be an organized thing, I mean, we could do it. Uh, I had a super chat last week that I forgot. Uh, where do I find the drip tips for your billet box? I'll tell you. Oleg makes these drip tips. That's his name on Instagram. Oleg can't pronounce it. Not going to try to pronounce it. Don't mean any disrespect. Just not even going to try. I can get through the first part though. And I think that means Oleg. I love this man's drip tips. I don't know if we've exchanged more than maybe one or two emails, but uh, I've just become a huge fan of this guy's drip tips. They just kind of rule. They're five tens. I use them for MTL stuff. I use them for restricted lung stuff. I just... You know, ever since the Just Try It drip tip, I just became a big fan of big, stupid, dorky drip tips. And I just love them. So that's where they come from. Uh, they come from Oleg. They are from Oleg. Dual use. Did I share Holly House last week? Uh, let's just read it because it's so good. Holly House left a comment on Instagram and said, To the dual user, super important. Dual use is exactly what saved my life. I heard about the vape once and never smoke again, people, but I was not one of them. I continued to buy vapes and use them while still smoking. Over the course of roughly three to five months, I found myself vaping more and smoking less, and then one day it was just over. I thought they'd pry them from my cold, bony, dead fingers, as I used to joke, trying to make it funny so I wouldn't have to face the morbid truth that cigarettes would someday kill me like my longtime best friend. A couple of years later, I moved across country and fell off the wagon. I smoked a little and wound up smoking again. I figured it worked for me last time. I will order new vapes. That makes me happy and go through the process again. It's, it is amazing to try to quit smoking without ever having to really try. No stress, no white knuckles. It worked again exactly as before. <laughs> Exactly as before. And it has been three years since I dual used over to all vaping. Don't beat yourself up about stupid phrases that idiots contrive to guilt you with. Dual using is a gateway. The gateway to telling Big Tobacco they got their last dollar from you. Cheers to dual using. There are literally thousands and thousands and thousands of stories like this. And it's one of the things that makes me so mad about Stanton Glantz talking about Dual use is worse than just smoking. If you're a dual user, Stanton Glance, old Glancy would rather have you just choose smoking instead of dual using. Yeah, I, I mentioned his name. You say his name three times, he just appears. You say old Glancy, old Glancy, old Glancy, and then he just kind of pops up and scares you with his weird face, with his weird raised eyebrows, but he's still squinting. I don't know how the human face does that. Dual use is critical. My brother dual used for a year before he uh, switched over completely. So if you're a dual user and you struggle with going back and forth between vaping and smoking, don't, 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 don't worry about it. Don't struggle. If you want to smoke a cigarette, please smoke a cigarette. If you want to vape, vape and try to vape more than you smoke. And before you know it, give it five months, give it a year. Eventually you're just going to go, okay, this is all I need. And I don't need cigarettes anymore. It's a process. It's a process, and that's one of the parts that the antis don't understand, and it it drives me insane. Engorged. It's true. All you have to do is say engorged. Stanton Glance pops up. Holy shit, Stanton Glance. You want a beer? Cheers. Ding. All right, so uh, I, had a, I had a contest last week uh, in the vlog where I was giving away two hoodies to the two best jokes. Whoever told me the two best jokes in the chat before the vlog started – they won hoodies. And so the winning jokes that I don't know that I shared last week, Chunkmeister, he won a tr he said, this bloke said to me, I'm going to attack you with the neck of a guitar. I said, is that a frat? Ah, uh, no. Okay. I thought that was really funny. So he got a free hoodie. Matthew said, uh, due to quarantine, I'll only be telling inside jokes. Come on. That's funny. 
Holy crap, that's funny. Okay. So those were the two winning jokes from last week. Uh, your hoodies are on the way. I promise, Chunkmeister. It'll get there before the end of the year. I also wanted to share this email. Maybe I'll share this. Maybe I'll wait and share Beth's, Beth's email a little bit later on. How are we doing on time? It's only 5 o'clock. Okay. I got one more favorite comment of the week, and this... Good evening, Joey. I got one more favorite comment of the week, and this is a retro comment of the week. This is from 2014. Yeah, 2014. Uh, I had only been doing YouTube for four years at that point, and I was, you know, I was a little bit more fragile back then, I guess. After spending over a decade on YouTube, um, negative comments and things like that, yeah, kind of rolls off your back a little bit, or at least you pretend that it does because it makes you feel better. You want to pretend that that guy who, who said that really mean thing on YouTube, it didn't affect you. It always does, but I just pretend it doesn't. You kind of got to have a little bit of a thick skin. And in 2014, I did not, <laughs> I did not have thick skin. And this was one of those comments that really cut to me. And so much so that I posted it on Facebook right when it happened. And now now it's come back to haunt us, damn it. <laughs> now it's come back to haunt us. Hey, Grim Green, I've been... 2014. Hey, Grim Green, I've been a subscriber of your YouTube for a few months now. I think that you do good videos. So for that, I think... So, so thank you for that. I think I have to say goodbye now, though. I noticed you don't do any sick coil builds like Rip Trippers, and your videos have become way, way, way too long. Just some helpful criticisms, lol. Can you please review the Dicytalus Gagadoid mech mod by Valgus Vapors? It looks so awesome. I would actually watch that video from you. Keep making videos, but I won't be watching them. Also, you have too many tattoos. <laughs> Your ex-subscriber hoax ruse. That was a comment that really, like, cut me. I was like, whoa, your ex-subscriber, that's a... Such a firm stance to take. Like I've unfollowed people on Instagram and didn't feel the need to tell them or make a big fuss about it. I've unsubscribed from people on YouTube and I never went, okay, Chris Stuckman, I used to really like your videos, but ever since I, goodbye, your ex-subscriber, Nick, like that's, a, that's crazy. And so in 2014, I wasn't ready to deal with that. <laughs> I wasn't ready to deal with that. And it kind of, I don't know, made me, uh, Made me bummed out. Just made me generally bummed out. Okay. That was it. That's comments. Let's do, uh, let's crank through some news. There's just a few things going on. I want to crank through some news before I get to any really cool, like, you know, fun retro vapes or mail or anything like that. So let's do news and advocacy. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do some news and advocacy, you guys. So there's a few things that I just like to throw out there because I really feel like they're super important. The Safer Nicotine Wiki is one of them. This is our document. This is our page where we can add, add, add science, studies, everything to the Safer Nicotine Wiki. Encourage everybody to at least go there, check it out, contribute if you can. I also desperately like to shout out Vaping Demystified. This came from the Yorkshire Cancer Research Institute in Yorkshire, England, and it's a great little, maybe 28 minutes. It's like a half hour documentary at the most, and it is, uh, pardon me, it's really very good, really, really hyper compelling. Your stories matter, and that's mostly what this Vaping Demystified is, is a lot of uh, user stories. So I'll post a link in the description, this burps. What the hell? What the hell? So I'll put a link down to that in the description as well as uh, the Google Doc. This is the Charles Gardner Google Doc, as the title says right here. This is a list of respected scientific and public health organizations that have reviewed all of the evidence and concluded that nicotine vaping is safer than smoking and helps smokers quit. You know who's included in this? Literally everybody. FDA, CDC, ALA, AHA, uh, American Cancer Society. Uh, everybody's included in this, and it's an incredible document. For all my Canadian peeps, 
of course, rights for vapors, and now tobaccokills.ca. Canada is on the verge of a nicotine cap slash flavor ban legislation that's about to happen. And it's a little bit of like a sticky floor situation because vapors are really torn on this in, the, in, in Canada. Some of them don't care about the nicotine cap and they only want to prevent the flavor ban and vice versa. And in my opinion, if you're going to push back against vape legislation, you always push back against every vape legislation. As Danielle pointed out on TBN last week, we're not, we're not negotiating with normal people. You're negotiating with your federal government. Your federal government wants to take everything. You just have to assume that they want to take everything from you and it's up to you to go, no. You don't get to take all this stuff. You just don't. So even if you're not against a nicotine cap, be against the nicotine cap. Because if the nicotine cap passes and there's no resistance to it, nothing's going to stop the Canadian government from going, ah, look how easy that was. Ha, huh, no resistance. Why not? Why don't we lower it to uh, 15 milligram? We'll get no resistance. And we've already established that we have the power to lower the nicotine caps so let's do it, lower it to 15, let's lower it to 10, let's lower it to eight, let's lower it to three. All because you gave them this much. It's just the sad fact of reality. It's you against your government. That's just, that's always gonna be the way it is. No matter if the government tells you, hey, I'm, I'm here to help you, you say, bye, go away, out, fuck off. You're not here to help me. You're here to take shit. And I know it. <laughs> so yeah, rights for vapors and tobacco kills.ca. We also have a, we got a new Surgeon General, you guys. Did you know this? Overdrip, did you know this? Vivek Murphy's back. Our old Surgeon General, Vivek Murthy. How you doing over there, Vivek? He's uh, he's back. He is not the ideal choice for Surgeon General, in my opinion. Much better than Jerome Adams, but Vivek Murthy does not have a great track record with harm reduction. He's uh, He kind of falls more along in the prohibitionist uh type of category. Um, I know for sure he's aware of vaping. Um, I've, I have photographic evidence of Gregory Connolly from the American Vaping Association handing Vivek Murthy a printed out copy of the Royal College of Physicians report. So he's very well aware of vaping and harm reduction. As far as what Vivek is going to do now that he's Surgeon General, who knows, man? Who knows? Hopefully he comes out on the side of harm reduction, right? That would be spectacular. We'll see. Right now, it's literally just a waiting game. He's been our Surgeon General in the past, and he's going to be our Surgeon General again. And again, his track record with harm reduction, not great. Not great. Uh, what else? What else is going on in the news? Oh, Zach. So Zach, uh, one of my subscribers, Zach, sent me an email that he got from his representative, Colin Allrad, in North Texas. And I'm telling you guys, something is changing. Something in the United States with vaping is shifting. The, the winds are blowing in a different direction. The tide is changing. Things are changing in the United States. On, T on TBN, just this, this last week, there was this Rhode Island representative whose name I cannot remember because I'm a terrible person, Julie Casimiro. Julie Casimiro in Rhode Island flipped on vaping, completely flipped on vaping. She was a protect the kids, Ivali flavor ban. Uh, these, are, these flavors are obviously only for kids. She was, she was that person. And when she came out in favor of the flavor ban in Rhode Island, she got about a billion phone calls from you guys, her constituents, expressing their anger a little bit, their sadness that she came out in favor of a flavor ban. She got such an overwhelming amount of calls. She ended up just meeting with her constituents. She met with uh, Giant Vapes, Mikey Runchy. She went to a local vape shop and sat there all day and saw adult after adult after adult come in and ask for strawberry shortcake flavored e-liquid. And she just completely flipped. And not just completely flipped. She didn't just walk back her previous statements. She completely took action and introduced new legislation to completely repeal the flavor ban that she had previously voted for. She is also a Democrat. Things can change. This is just one person. Rhode Island, 
flipped. And she said, her quote was, I'm going to butcher it. No matter what happens with the legislation, whether she can repeal this flavor ban or not, she's making it her mission to educate other people in the political field about vaping. This is a, this can only be a good thing. And so one of my subscribers, Zach, getting back on track, sent an email. I'm assuming it was of some sort of call to action, or maybe he did this of his own volition to Colin Allrad from Texas and Colin Allrad replied to him. The first half of the email is very like cookie cutter. Like, well, as you know, vaping is a relatively new, you know, in flavors with kids and nicotine and blah. it's like that, you know, that recap, that cookie cutter recap that we always get. But Colin Allrad went on to say, I am a father and like any parent, I am very concerned about the health risks associated with tobacco products and especially the use of these products by young people. I also believe that North Texans should be able to make the choices that make the most sense for themselves and their health. For some adults, vaping products can potentially be an alternative to smoking products. Ensuring the health and safety of North Texans is my number one priority. And as with any consumer product, North Texans deserve to know the facts. In the meantime, I'll work with my colleagues to continue to ensure consumers make their own choices regarding access to safe vaping and tobacco products. I will keep your thoughts in mind regarding the ban on shipping these products through USPS as I continue my work in Congress. Thank you again. Blah, blah, blah. You can reach out to me. 32nd Conditional District. Sincerely, Colin Allred. Okay, I thought his name was Allrad, and I was like, okay, that Allrad... All rad. His name's All Rad. Still, that is, uh, that is, that might as well be a complete 180 from every other politician in the United States right now. I have yet to hear any other politicians, maybe except uh, 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 Rhode Island Julie, Julie Casimiro, maybe Colin All Red here, say things like adults should get to decide what they put in their bodies, bodily autonomy. Such a rare thing that just this is just a little, little drip tip of hope. Just a little drip tip of hope. Uh, he asked me, Zach asked me, like, what do I do with this? Or, you know, what do I do? I said, hey, follow up, respond to this guy. Say, thank you for, you know, for listening to your adult vapor constituents. I said, set up a meeting. I said, go to whatever is like the best, greatest, coolest vape shop in the north of Texas and get that business owner and get this senator and you together and show him that adults are the ones that are vaping these flavors and that needs to be protected. Obviously, he voted for the vape mail ban, as did literally everybody else in Congress, and the president signed it without even knowing what was in the bill. And that's how it got banned. But look, there's hope, there's movement, there's things happening. There's big, there's big things happening. And I have, uh, I have a lot of faith. I also want to give a tremendous, tremendous shout out to uh, 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 Wayne Walker over there at DIY or Die. One of my, he's been a, a really, really on an advocate. He's one of the few YouTubers in the vape space that I have seen personally like, nah, fuck this, let's, let's advocate he started a new uh, a new Twitter organization called Pather. Yep, this is Parents Advocating Tobacco Harm Reduction. This is basically, he's a parent now. He's an advocate for tobacco harm reduction. This is Parents Advocating for Tobacco Harm Reduction. This is designed, you know, to be the direct antithesis of organizations like PAVE, you know? I did get a weird warning when I went to the Twitter today. It said this account is temporarily restricted. You're seeing this warning because there's been some unusual activity from this account. Do you still want to view it? I'm like, yeah, I follow it. Why? And see, it only has like 50 something followers. He has four tweets. I don't know what could have been uh, unusual activity, but look, Wayne Walker, he's out there. He's putting his mouth, he's putting his money where his mouth is and he's starting Pather on Twitter. And he's also on TikTok doing like essentially debunking videos, right? Like he'll find an article or someone on TikTok saying something about vaping and he will do edit, you know, and go, actually, this is the, this is the real data. This is the real science. Don't listen to this shit. He's out there actively debunking bad vape stuff on TikTok. Uh, 
you, you just you just got so much street cred, Wayne Walker. So much street cred, bro. Keep fighting the good fight. I could tell. I knew. I'm like, Wayne's one of the good ones, man. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you for defend helping defend all of our rights. You know, all of our rights to vape. And if you're on Twitter, check out Pather. It's cool. Pather. Parents advocating tobacco harm reduction. What a great name. Pather. Moving on from that... What are we doing on time? Oh, we're doing we're doing spectacular on time. Uh, moving on from that, uh, who's anybody in Alabama? Alabama House bill passes designed to curb teenage vaping and regulate the state's vaping industry. So the thing is, here's the thing with this: it's just really weird and doesn't make much sense. It's not necessarily bad or negative. There's no flavor ban. The House of Representatives on Tuesday, Montgomery, Alabama, passed a bill designed to reduce the use of vapes and e-cigarettes among young people. HB 273 introduces a whole new swath of regulations for the e-cigarette industry in Alabama. Among them, it would prevent vape manufacturers from advertising techniques designed to appeal to young people. Don't know what that means. Incorporating characters from comic books in ad campaigns, bad. Okay, cool. I absolutely accept that. It would also prevent makers of vape mods and pods and cartridges from claiming that the taste of their products resembles candies, cakes, or other sugary treats. Okay, so that just sounds weird to me. It sounds like they just said, okay, well, there's not a flavor ban. You just can't call these by their flavors. I don't know if they have a list of like, Here's words you can't use. How f helpful would that be, honestly? In, in the vape industry, if the FDA just said, here's a list of words you can't use in your advertising, and we go, oh, okay. I can, st I can make an e-liquid and not call it candy, cake, or sugary treat. I don't know exactly what that means. It's just for show. It's like, oh, no, no, they're still flavored. They still taste like candy. We just, uh, we just don't call it that. HB 273 is sponsored by Barbara Drummond. Barbara Drummond says, my issue has always been to safeguard the welfare of young people. Absolutely. Another thing, just young people though. Barbara Drummond, to all the adults in Alabama, Barbara Drummond is just like, I don't fucking care. I don't care. I don't care if you die uh, from smoking related diseases. We just have to protect the kids. They also uh, raise the age for purchasing all tobacco products to 21. Uh, there's already nationwide tobacco 21, but I guess they just wanted to do it in their state. Um, one other thing that this bill does that's already passed, this isn't like a, a call to action. This is just like a heads up. If anybody's in Alabama, here's what you get to deal with now. There is going to be a certification directory. This is what they're calling a certification directory. So if you are a vape manufacturer or retailer in the state of Alabama, you have to pay your sort of uh, dues to be part of this directory. It's required for you to be part of this directory of all the vape shops in the state, but you also have to pay money to be included in the directory of all the vape shops in the state. And this is Mostly, I guess, so they can enforce, keep tabs on things. Now, the weirdest part about all of this, the weirdest part about all of this is they essentially want vape shop owners and manufacturers, for lack of a better term, they, they just want them to lie. There's a, there's a stipulation in here that says manufacturers and retailers of nicotine products like vapes and e-cigarettes will also be required to post notices about the dangers of their use, such as exposure to toxic metals. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense regulatory wise. It doesn't make any sense why you would demand that vape shops lie. There's no science. I mean, she knows there's no science showing that toxic metals go in your lungs when you vape, right? There is some science that shows when you jam a mouse into like a four inch tube and then, uh, you know, bombard that mouse's lungs for six hours straight with caustic chemicals that, that yeah, there could be some toxic metals, but not in, in normal, you know, use where your, your wicks are wet and things like this. I hate that. I hate 
I absolutely hate that vape shops have to hang a sign in their shop that says, warning, these will hurt you and they contain toxic metals. If a smoker walks, if I was a smoker and I walked into a vape shop thinking, I've heard these are so much better for me. You know, in the UK, you know, oh, Royal College of, they, everybody's vaping in the UK. I'll go try vaping. I walk into a vape shop in Alabama and the first thing I see is a giant sign telling me that what I'm about to do to improve my health has toxic metals in it. I don't, I'm not okay with that. I'm not okay with that. I'm okay with literally everything else they want to do. Create a directory, fine. You don't want them calling candy flavors, fine. 21 and over, perfect. Asking vape shops to lie to their customers, that's, uh, that's over the line. That's completely disingenuous, and uh, I can't stand that. So if anybody is in a vape shop in Alabama, I want to see these signs. I want to see these bullshit signs. You know, it's, and it's our own government's fault. The health, Department of Health and Human Services runs the real cost campaign. And the only place you see heavy metals in your lungs from vaping is from the real cost, which is our own U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. They're lying and that they're making vape shops repeat that lie that they started. Whoa. 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 Okay. So there you go. That's what's up. That's just a thing. That's what's happening in Alabama right now. That's what's happening in Alabama. Uh, what are we doing on time? Holy shit. All right. Uh, what I'm going to do is end this news and advocacy segment by mentioning one of my new favorite people, literally of all time. This is Mark Gunther, and Mark Gunther wasn't on my radar before two weeks ago. But the way that this all kind of shook out, and this is what I talk about when I when I see winds changing and tides changing, because the biggest opponent of vaping globally that is just, you, you cannot deny this, is Mike Bloomberg in the World Health Organization and the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids. Well, Mark Gunther has been a journalist in the world of philanthropy for a very, 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 very long time. And the way that this kind of shook out is, um, what's his face? Uh, there's too many names to remember. Too many names to remember. Cliff Douglas, who founded the American Cancer Society, put out a bit of a manifesto about two weeks ago, calling on all sides of the tobacco harm reduction debate to stop fighting and come together and save lives. He basically said, look, you guys are all messing this up. Vaping is going to change the world, but it's not going to change the world if all you two sides can do is fight with each other. Well, that inspired Mark Gunther to look into Bloomberg and Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids because Cliff Douglas was very hypercritical of Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids and Mike Bloomberg and the World Health Organization. So what I'm going to link to in the description is a 12-minute podcast. That's it. And it's a video. So you can watch a 12-minute video. And this is a conversa conversation with philanthropy journalist Mark Gunther. And in this podcast, he basically lays out, you know, in as fast as he can in 12 minutes, like the whole like large article that he wrote, because this is all, I'm explaining this so poorly, I'm surprised anybody's following this. So Mark Gunther, I'll, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna put this in the chat right now. Everybody just click on this, <laughs> just click on this link and go bookmark it and then come back to it. But Mark Gunther wrote a piece called Bloomberg's Millions Funded an Effective Campaign Against Vaping. Could it do more harm than good? And this is a, mile long paper just taking Mike Bloomberg in the campaign for tobacco free kids and like Stanton Glantz and just raking their faces over the over the coals just in a severe way raking their faces over the coals talking about how Mike Bloomberg is actively leading people to their deaths type of thing N no holding back at all on Mike Bloomberg and if you're into this and you like the idea of someone really talented and really incredibly smart ripping on Mike Bloomberg and Stanton Glantz and the anti-vaping movement, then you, like me, are going to love Mark Gunter. So I'm going to post a link down in the description to this podcast. Again, it's like, it's, it's 
12 minutes and 56 seconds long. There's going to be two parts. I've already watched the first part, you know, like a dozen times just over and over and over again, because it's just so nice to hear someone who's so intelligent and, 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 and so respected repeating the same things that we've been repeating, saying things like, Mike Bloomberg's a prohibitionist. Mike Bloomberg is anti-tobacco harm reduction. Campaign for tobacco-free kids or science deniers. Hearing someone with authority say it, oh, it makes, my God, it makes all of the stress from being in this space like almost bearable. In the article, he says, last week, the Chronicle of Philanthropy published an in-depth examination by Gunther about the massive grand marking support of Michael Bloomberg and his foundation for efforts to reduce the use of flavored e-cigarettes. Gunther was kind enough to speak to me last week. Uh, the just less than 13 minute video below is the first of two parts of our discussion. The second is here. In the first part, we talk about the Bloomberg anti-vaping effort and what it may tell us about the nature and effects of such a progress of much of progressive philanthropy. I know that's a lot and it's a lot, but just, it'll all make sense. Go, go listen to this podcast and it's going to be, uh, it's going to be literally one of the best things that you will ever listen to. I would challenge you not to listen to it twice in a row. Cause I had, I listened to it twice in a row. It's an incredible. So shout out Cliff Douglas, shout out Mark Gunther. Things like this are why I say tides are changing. Who is going to stand up to Bloomberg? Who? Bloomberg's a philanthropist, billion dollar philanthropist. Who's going to stand up to him? How about a philanthropy journalist who's been in this space and is a subject matter expert on philanthropy and sees what Mike Bloomberg is doing and goes, what? What are you doing? What are you doing? No one should be okay with what Mike Bloomberg is doing right now. And it's not just happening in the United States. It's happening in the United Kingdom, the United Kingdom, the RCP. They are sending a group to the World Health Organization Tobacco Control Summit, COP9, where they are taking a very, very firm, either, either you World Health Organization, either you, either you recognize tobacco harm reduction or we, you don't get any more of our money. That's basically what the United Kingdom, that's the ultimatum that the United Kingdom is kind of throwing down to the World Health Organization because the World Health Organization gets something like 70% of their funding from the UK. UK is going to go to bat for harm reduction and uh, I love it. I couldn't be happier about it. So I'll post a link down in the description to that Gunther article. Uh, let's go ahead and wrap this up. I had another segment, I uh, had another little bit of news and advocacy here planned, but I uh, I can wait and share that uh, in a little bit. In fact, I just want to share, I just want to share one of these, honestly, because it's so great. But uh, I don't remember exactly how I ran across this on Twitter. But uh, this is 34 great vaping quotes. This comes from eCigaretteDirect.co.uk. This is on their blog portion of their website. And it's 34 great vaping quotes. And these run the gamut from, you know, Carl Phillips, Clive Bates, David Sweener, all these people in the tobacco control space, Public Health England, all of these people. But there were two in particular that I really thought were comedic. People like John Britton say things like, if all smokers in Britain stopped smoking cigarettes and started smoking e-cigarettes, we would save 5 million deaths in people who are alive today. It's a massive potential public health prize. This is mostly just 35 comments of people praising vaping but they're not all positive. <laughs> As we've discussed, the World Health Organization isn't exactly, you know, whatever, on the up and up with vaping. So Dr. Trinidad Florentine of the World Health Organization about vaping had to say this, while regular cigarettes have a filter with this delivery device, the electronic cigarette, the nicotine goes directly into the lungs. Well, run for the fucking hills, Ma Barker. He's, is he defending cigarettes? Does it look like to anybody else that he's defending cigarettes because, <laughs> because they have a filter on top? Is he, is he giving credit to the cigarette filter for being a harm reduction product? to the extent that saying he would trust a cigarette filter 
more than an electronic cigarette because this, oh, nicotine right into your lungs. And I'm thinking, hi, you're a doctor, right? It does say doctor right there. You have to know that nicotine is not the most dangerous part of a cigarette and that having a, <laughs> a filter... Sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, at least cigarettes have a filter. Directly from the World Health Organization, at least cigarettes have a filter. And then I wanted to share this one from Elaine Keller of Casa. This is my favorite thing of all time. Why is your concern about my addiction to nicotine more important than my concern about getting lung cancer? This is the greatest question that Bloomberg campaign for tobacco-free kids, Stanton Glantz, nobody can answer. Why? Why do they care so much about your addiction to nicotine more than you care about getting lung cancer? What is that? What is one trump the other? Because Bloomberg has billions of dollars? That makes him right? Unbelievable. This is my favorite thing of all time. I'm going to use this so many places, dude. I'm going to use this everywhere. I'm going to use this on Twitter. Why is your concern about my addiction to nicotine more important than my concern about not getting fucking lung cancer or not getting COPD or not getting emphysema? Why does your concern about my addiction trump my concerns about my own health? Nannies. Nannies everywhere. So uh, I'll post a link down in the description to this, this, this article. There was a, well, there's some other ones here. John Nitskin said, if we could get all tobacco smokers, this is a Dr. Joel Nitskin, sorry. If we get all tobacco smokers to switch from regular cigarettes to electronic cigarettes, we could reduce the death toll from more than 400,000 a year to less than 4,000, maybe as low as 400. The evidence is continually piling up for vaping, and I will have links all across this description to literally everything I talked about. Vaping is going nowhere. Nowhere. The revolution, it's begun. The revolution is a nonstop freight train right now. Tides are changing. I believe that 2021 and 2022 are going to be the turnaround years. I'm just... Come, you know, mark this date down, March 1st, 2021. Come back here in two years. And tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Unfortunately, he who has the gold makes the rules. That's, that is unfortunate, but that is not, uh, that is not an acceptable answer anymore to the people in power. People are looking at Mike Bloomberg going, wait, he just has a bunch of money. That's it. That's it. How much did he give to the Philippines FDA and broke international law and domestic law? How much was that? Oh, that was a bunch. He tried to buy the Philippines FDA, like just straight up buy them, like buy the organization. Unbelievable. So it's whatever. I'll have links down in the description and uh, you can check those out and read them however you want. And uh, I guess what we're going to do now, God damn it. What are we doing, Glance? Super chats? Super chats? Are you befuddled by the super chats? Okay, let's do some uh, let's do some super chats. <laughs> That's it. That's all you get. And I know there's a bunch of uh, super chats that I missed. I saw them coming in, and I apologize. I'm gonna try to get to all of these, but there's just so many. DJ, DJ Catmane. Hey Grim, happy kind of birthday. Love everything you do. I'm stocking up on Liquid Barn. Good shot. Good choice. And uh, Jungle One Shot flavorings, PG, VG, and nicotine. You stocking up on any one shots? Here's the thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm stocking up on a lot of stuff. I've taken inventory of what I have and I'm, I'm, st I don't know why I'm stocking up. I'm stocking up on stuff so that I have stuff to vape, but I'm also stocking up on stuff so that I have stuff to give away to people because I, even just in the first week of this vape mail ban, there are people who had no idea what was going on, which fine, that's fair. No idea what was going on. They just tried to make an order because they were out of juice and now they discovered they can't get any liquid. And it's like, well, I'm out of liquid. I might as well go buy a pack of cigarettes. For people like that, I want to have liquid <laughs> so that I can go, okay, go buy a pack of cigarettes. Liquid's on the way, okay? Just come on. Liquid's on the way. I'm going to try to help. 
And so that's kind of what I'm stocking up on. I have a lot. Uh, Super Good was very generous, a very generous company, incredible company Super Good is. And they hooked up a lot of Nick shots. And so hopefully I'll have enough abundance to help other people that uh, are going to be affected by this. Uh... <sighs> ah, bullshit. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. Bullshit. Red Gorilla, happy birthday. You're almost birthday buddies with my spouse, Chrissy, April 6th. Yes, I'm April 6th. Red Gorilla, sorry. <clears throat> I'm April 6th too, Red Gorilla. April 6th. I hope your wife, uh, hope your spouse, Chrissy, has a great birthday. Eifer, happy birthday, Nick, and many happy returns. Eifer, I really appreciate that, Bo. Uh, Izzy, Today marks five years drug, alcohol, and tobacco-free, all thanks to vaping being my only vice. Flavors save lives. Flavors save lives. Flavors save lives. Izzy, I love you. Thank you for sharing that with us. Awesome. And that's not, you know, there's been so many people that I've heard those same exact story from. You know, I'm drug, I'm alcohol, and I'm combustion-free. Vaping is my only vice anymore. And I'm thinking, you have the, you have the, that's the, that's the only vice you will ever need. You've chosen the least harmful vice possibly on earth. Sean, hey, Grim Hope all is well. Since they no longer make pony on acid, what's the closest juice flavor to that? Happy early birthday. Here's the thing, Sean. I, it's a one-of-a-kind liquid. I have not ever had anything that tastes like pony on acid. I've never had anything that comes close to pony on acid. It's just... The reason that I don't think anything can stand up to pony on acid is just because I'm so familiar with the liquid that like any little difference to it, I go, nope, that's not pony on acid. That's not pony on acid. Christopher, loving my mixes as in plural, loving the mix exprosomizer uh, V5 MTLRTA. Uh, awesome, crazy, good flavor. Definitely worth trying out. Sick. That sounds sick, Christopher. Barbara, happy birthday, cuz. Uh, you couldn't have waited until the 16th and we could have shared a birthday. You were always impatient. I know. Shout out some love to the Green family, the Vape fam, and all us awesome April babies. Fuck yeah, April babies. The April babies rule. They're a great band. Uh, Suburban Dirt Farmer says, you and happy birthday, Grim. <laughs> Enjoy your break. I will, Suburban Dirt Farmer. I appreciate you, bro. 100 Proof Texas says, yo, yo, Nick. First time getting to catch the vlog live. Yes. Welcome. I hope everybody's been cool with you. Duchess, yo, yo, and happy effing birthday, you gosh darn awesome son of a gun. Duchess, oh, you son of a bitch. Thank you, Duchess. I really appreciate that, man. Uh, Detail by Design says, happy birthday, Brother Grim. Hope you have a good one. I will. I'm planning on it. I told you my plan. It involves, you know, and Godzilla movies. And so I'm really excited about that. I watched uh, Godzilla versus Gigan the other night. And then uh, actually last night I watched Godzilla versus Gigan. And I watched like the first half of Godzilla King of the Monsters in preparation for Godzilla versus Kong. And then I'm planning on watching um, Shin Godzilla <laughs> next week because it's supposed to be a really good Godzilla movie. I've never seen it. Shin Godzilla. And uh, what was the one with uh, Godzilla Final Wars? Godzilla Final Wars. I think that's the two, the two Godzilla movies I have planned. I have to buy both of them though. They're not streaming anywhere. It's kind of a bummer. Um, anyway, <laughs> Josh, happy birthday, bro. I know I'm not uh, formally known, but I learned vaping and building and RDAs from you, whether you know smoke-free two years. Hell yeah, Josh. You don't need to be well-known, bro. You're one of the fam here. Tribal Buddha, that's very gracious of you. Gabe Claus says, the reindeer and I personally flew Sabine from Germany to Philly. Oh, and happy birthday to you, Beecher, and that sexy man, Eric. Watch out, Eric. Gabe Claus has a crush on you. Give the government inch, they'll take 100,000 miles. Yeah, 100% uh, they will. 100% they will. Matt Sinister, thank you for coming to the Cloudy Dates, Cloudy Days, Calm Nights podcast on Lethal Coil's YouTube channel and on Spotify. It was a blast. Yes, I was on the Cloudy Nights Calm cloudy days calm nights podcast with uh lethal coils who took us ice skating and the legendary matt sinister they got a little uh podcast going and they're great guys they have a lot of fun over there and i got to hang out with them and uh yeah that's on the lethal coils youtube thanks matt uh joe tech i'm not rich but i want to give you some bucks to show some love oh much respect for you thank you I really appreciate that. We're going to pick up with uh, New Wave Dave when we get back, but we're slowly running out of time, and I have birthday gifts to open up, so let's vape mail.
Yeah, sorry. Huh. Let's open some mail, you guys. Let's just chill. Let me have a vape for a second. Let me check in on you guys. How you doing? Artiso Mod, appreciate you being here. Finally made it to a live vlog. Hi, Lee. Hi. Hi. <laughs> The legend is here, Lee, not the real Gerard Butler. Got those. Uh, let me have a. I'm just gonna have a couple rips off of this. Uh, talk amongst yourselves. You know, I'm just gonna have. Let's. Uh, in fact, let's. Uh, let's hydrate real quick because I have not hydrated this entire stream, uh, and I need to vape and hydrate. It's intermission. Oh, I love water. I'm glad that I love water so much. It makes it easy to stay hydrated. Hydro homies. Hydro homies. Yeah, uh, you might see on this video's has paid uh, advertisement thing. That just is on all my videos, but this video in particular is actually sponsored by someone. It's the coldest effing water bottle. I've had this for uh, almost a year now, and it has barely left my side. I love this water bottle more than I have loved a water bottle, and it makes a great palette for stickers. Sticker packs available at GrimArmyMerch.com, and I'll post a link down in the description. If you feel like you need to stay hydrated, you're a hydro homie, 64 ounces every single day. One of these, I'm supposed to drink two of these every day, but that's too much urination, you know? That's just too much peeing. So I try to get one of those down a day. Stay hydrated, hydro homies. Now I got some, uh... see, I don't know. Here's the thing. I'm gonna start off with, with packages that I know for sure are not any sort of birthday gifts. Not, no sound? Is there sound, Ronnie Morgan? Is there sound? I hope there's sound. Don't let me, don't let me not have sound. Don't let me not have sound, damn it. Uh, so let's do, let's see. I know this one is from uh, James, James Wolf. You here? You in the chat, bro? I'm opening it from the bottom. Your package got a little bit, uh, you know, squinched by uh, USPS here. But I think this is uh, beers, maybe? Oh, I see one beer. Ooh, uh, yeah. I see a beer for sure. There's nothing wrong with uh, doing a little beer tradings. What do we got here, James Wolf? Wolf. We got big time, big ripe, big ripe hi hazy IPA. How did you know that I like hazy IPAs, you son of a bitch? Yeah, big timber, big bin ripe, bine ripe, bine ripe. What? I'm gonna, I'm gonna write your name on this, James Wolf. Because if I don't. Then you'll never get credit. It'll be one of those things like, it'll be a very random beer tasting, like probably three months from now, and I'll come up here and say, oh yeah, I got this one, uh, Big Timber. I don't remember who this came from, but if you sent this to me, let me know in the chat so that I can give you a proper credit. I don't have to do that anymore because, because reasons. Whoa, there's lots of sort of little, 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 little uh, knickknacks in there. Little, little sort of things. What is this? this is this an RDA? I don't even know. It's just, I just, it's just mystery. <gasps> Ooh, what are you? Oh yeah, they're the tsunami. That's right. Yes, I got a tsunami. Fucking A. What up, Retro Vape? What up, Future Build Stream? We got a Geek Vape tsunami because I lost mine. It's okay. I'm assuming you want this back. I'm assuming you want this back. And then lastly, this could be something dope too. Exactly. Derek, thank you. Thank you for mentioning that. Everybody uh, smash that like button. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. Zero milligram pony on acid, a.k.a. berry fantasy. I can add some Nick shots to this. I can mix this with some six milligram, make some three milligram. Thank you. I mean, this is one of those. I think that you said that you tried it and you didn't like this. And I, fuck, I would just vape zero milligram pony on acid. It's so good. 
Well, thank you, James Wolf. Appreciate that very much, man. I think there's some uh, coils in here. This is from, uh, ooh, Canada. What I get from Canada. Have you had that beer poon sauce? I've heard it's, uh, I've heard it's your favorite beer. I'm just kidding. Oh, overdrip, overdrip, overdrip. You in the house? Overdrip. I got some overdrip drips. I got some testing grounds. Overdrip BC VC. I don't know what this is. Overdrip. Overdrip. Testing grounds. Overdrip. I don't know what flavors these are. I don't know what VC, BC, VC, BC is. Overdrips testing grounds. Okay. This came from Canada. Uh, it's three milligram. Is it? Are you three milligram? Yeah, three milligram. All right, cool. Shit. We got some testing grounds. We got some uh, future very random liquid tastings. And Band Builds Coils. That's a cool label. It's a slick label. Band Builds. They're banned. They're Band Builds. Let's see what we got here. I think there's some literature in here. All right. I included these band builds not only because they're only available on my site, but they are GD bangers. Hey, Nick, hope you and Casey enjoy this. Please feel free to throw this into a random liquid tasting on a vlog. Absolutely, I will. You're a legend in the community, and I will forever remember New Guy. <gasps> new Guy. Yeah, New Guy. Holy shit, New Guy. Was that you, Chris Overdrip? Were you New Guy? I remember new guy. Holy fuck, that's funny. I remember new guy. I remember new guy. Nephron, what are you even... What are you even doing right there? I mean, what is that? What is that all about? Okay, so these are all possible uh, birthday gifts. I don't know. I don't know. This is definitely a gift. Okay. Is this a mom gift? I don't know who this is from, but this is amazing. Imperial, Imperial Baker. Come on. That's so fucking cool. Uh, it has a, it has, it's a, it's a, you know, it's an apron. It's my, it's a chef apron. I got a Vader one and I got a trooper one. I can wear the Vader one. Casey can wear the Trooper one. That's amazing. I don't even know who this came from. It just says Fulfillment Center. I don't know who this came from. Thank you. Happy birthday. I don't know who this is from, but I love this. <laughs> I love this. What Mostly, I like that it has the Stormtrooper crotch. You know, it wouldn't feel right if I didn't have a life-size Stormtrooper crotch in my face. Just like that Stormtrooper crotch right there. I love the Stormtrooper crotch. Imperial Baker. And you know, on the Death Star, they had chefs, right? I never saw Vader eat or any Stormtroopers. I've never seen anybody in Star Wars eat anything except for blue and green milk. But they had to have Imperial Bakers, right? <laughs> they had to have Imperial Bakers. It's the Jubbies Revolution. Um, let's do... Okay, let's do this one real quick. I don't know what this is. It's just blue. It's just a blue bag. And I, I feel like there's a textile in here, and I don't want to... Uh... What? Holy shit, who's this from? <laughs> yes! Holy crap! That is sick as tits! That is a scout trooper laying down some sick BMX moves with the rad logo. Come on. I love this. I love this. I, I love this. I love this. Whoever this came from, was this a Jake Scrapwood? Did you say that there was a blue bag, Jake Scrapwood? I hate opening blind gifts, but I love the crap out of this. Whoever it came from, thank you. Thank you for the birthday gift. Look at that. 
Dude, that's a scout trooper doing some sick BMX action. Rad. This is the, the this is from you, Jake Scrapwood. Fucking a Jake, Jake Scrapwood. Uh, thank you, bro. I love the shit out of this. This is like if I mean, Star Wars and Rad combined. I mean, that's crazy. Like, if Spider Man or Godzilla were on here too, it's like, hey, everything you love. <laughs> Fucking one T-shirt, uh, Jake. You're I. You're too kind to me, Jake Scrapwood. And thank you. This is this is awesome. This is completely awesome. This. I love this so hard. Hang on, I'm going to just keep it right here. I'm going to keep it close to me. Jake Scrapwood. You. I don't know where this is from either. In fact, here, let's do these two last because I want to open this Reload guy. I got a huge box from Reload Vapor. Reload Vapor USA. And I have no idea. I didn't know if they were coming out with anything new. Maybe this is just a... Just a thank you gift? I have no idea. But I'm a Reload Vapor fan, boy, so let's get in here. What are you? What are you? What are you? Whoa. What the fucking shit? Is there any literature in here? No? Okay. Holy crap, this is kind of amazing. Um, whoa. So it's... Here, let me take all the baggies out of here. These look. This looks to me like, honestly, one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my life. Honestly, one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my life. Sorry, I'm way back here in the chat. So this is from Reload Vapor. There's the chat. You can see the chat and the reflection. And then you can boop. And there's like, is it focusing on that? It looks like one, two, three, four, five custom engraved Axe RDAs. Is this the Reload Vapor S or the Reload Vapor X RDA? They are all S. Reload Vapor S RDA. Man, and they're all uh, like crazy hyper engraved. I wish I could. I wish I could show you this, but I don't think I'm going to be able to actually show you this. Zip, boom, stop wobbling. Can you see the engravings on this? Like that is kind of sick. It's hard. It's really hard to see. You can see it says reload right there. Here, let me get a let me get another one here. Hi. Look at this one. Kind of, it's like it's tribally a little bit. It almost looks like palm trees, like it's tropical or something. I have no idea what's on these, but these are rad as hell. That is rad as hell. And there's five of them here. Maybe we can do this a little bit better. Can you see this and shine them in the light? See how engraved? Like, look at that one on the end. That is sick. Dude, these are kind of sick. I was not expecting this. I had no, I mean, and this is, it comes with um, tons of, like, tons of whatever. Spare, spare everything. Spare O-rings, spare baggies, everything. And, like, a whole mess of super dope RDAs that are Reload S. I think these are S. Is this the S RDA or the X RDA? I can't remember. I'm uh, I'm really excited about these. I like Reload. I like Reload Vapor. Uh, I, and the only thing I didn't really like that they ever did was that mouth to lung. Yeah, it's the S. It's the single coil guy. Does it have an AFC? Yep. AFC right there. Oh, that's right. And the AFC is, I forgot about this. The AFC is attached to your drip tip. It can rotate on the inside. All right, sick. Look, I'm just going to have to set one of these up. Not right now. It's just a single coil deck. I should have left it zoomed in. Single coil deck on the inside. Kind of sits in that uh, little cradle of airflow there. Look, I'm not against sending these out for birthdays. 
if wow okay um sick i mean that's super sick reload for the win uh thank you i don't even know I don't even, this is completely unexpected, out of the blue. I, you know, usually I'll get a heads up. Reload Vapor will give me a heads up and say, hey, we're shipping you a thing. We got this tank or we got a thing or we got a squonk and it's coming to you. And I go, oh, okay. And that's all I've ever exchanged with Reload Vapor. I've never even been like, how are you doing today? It's not, it's like, here's a package. And I go, okay, that's it. <laughs> that's my extent of talking to Reload Vapor. It's felty on the bottom. It feels like a pool table or something. Bling, bling. Uh, I'm really excited about this. I don't know. Maybe these are valuable or something. Set it up. Set it up. <laughs> I don't have enough time tonight. Don't have enough time tonight because we still got to get to two more packages and I'm saving the last one that I know for sure is my birthday gift from my dad. This one, I have no idea. This one just says... Intuitive inventions. This could be the, my birthday gift from my mom. Could be. I don't know. Nope. This is. What are you? Oh. Oh, hang on. There's some. Uh, this is some vape stuff here. Uh, geek vape. All right. I might not be, I might not be sure. I shouldn't be showing this right now. Oh, okay. You know, most everybody knows about the drop 1.5, the drop 1.5 and the drop solo. Got them. Got uh digi flavor, the torch RTA. What? Okay. First of all, how are we doing on time? Bad. Okay. Bad. We're doing bad on time. What do you mean? How are we doing on time? We're doing bad. This is going to be another fucking record-setting vlog. I just have a feeling. I need to figure out ways to trim time off of this. Hey, there you go. That's the Torch RTA from Indigia Flavor. New RTA. Top airflow. Sharp. Feels sharp right out of the gate. Just want to say that. Okay. It's got a... It's got an angled like a like a angled uh, dead rabbit type of deck on there. That's it. It's like a postless dead rabbit, but they're angled up for some reason. I'm guessing this is a dual coil RTA. Not 100% sure. Digi flavor. I haven't seen something from Digi flavor in a while, and I think that's cool. I'm glad to see Digi flavor doing something again. The Digi flavor torch and the Dig and the Geek Vape drop. Drop RDA 1.5 in the solo. I heard 69 hours long. Is that how long you want to go tonight, Music Man? Hey, all you can handle, man. All you can handle. I just want to get a look at this RDA real quick. Ah, <sighs> Geek Vape, I mean, come on. Let's just... Why do they do this? Why do they do this? Why do they do this? <laughs> oh, yeah, got it. Oh, wow, that is a huge package for just the smallest thing on earth. Does Vapor Chronicles have anything to do with this? He's not on YouTube anymore, is he? I haven't seen, I haven't, I haven't heard from him in fucking ages. Same deck, same airflow. Same deck. I'll be sure to cut my coils correctly this time as to avoid the wrath of the drop fanboys. Mesh, sort of anarchist style mesh holes cut out of that AFC right there. You can kind of see that. And that's going to line up with the vertical. That's kind of a fancy little airflow. I wasn't a big fan of the drop. A little bit sharp. Ooh, that is a, uh, that is a turbulent son of a bitch. That is turbulent. There's no way around it. <laughs> that just, it sounds like a helicopter. It sounds like a crackly coil without a coil. Nope. It's going to be a hard pass on that airflow. Might vape great. Let's try the little mini guy here. 
How does it get turbulent so fast? How does it get turbulent so fast? <sighs> turbulent like crazy on those, but shit, we'll save those for uh, a review, Monday build stream, probably something like that. It's just cool to see something new from Digiflavor, honestly. And now I can't even get this box closed again. Oh, this, two RDAs are in here. Two, two RDAs are in this size of a box. I just wanna, just wanna point that out. Yeah, that uh, that drops that drop was turbulent as fuck. Uh, I had a feeling that was gonna happen. As soon as you see the stripes on the outside and the mesh holes on the inside, you go, nope, those are not going to be good together. Kind of just tell. Now, here I got a birthday gift from my dad. Yeah, Dad Green. Love you. Can't wait. Oh. 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 Um, they did it without him? They released another drop RDA without him? Whoa, that's dildos. Whoa, that's kind of dildos. Uh, thank you, Dad. I love you like crazy. This is uh, exactly, exactly, ex exactly what I'm after. Um, yeah. Thank you, dad. I love you. This is, uh, I've been, uh, I've been getting into, uh, art and drawing and, uh, calligraphy. Um, I, uh, he got me a calligraphy, a whole calligraphy pen set and calligraphy paper because I've been into, I've been trying to get into calligraphy. I love the idea of fonts and lettering. Um, I used to do lettering, I mean, fucking forever ago, and I never had any like instruction or training in anything like that. But lettering to me is, uh, it just, it gives me, you know, a little bit of a, uh, like a design kind of boner. I like, I love graphic design and laying things out and uh, art and calligraphy and hell yes. Hell yeah, calligraphy. <laughs> extra broad hell yeah extra broad and all i really picture is like you know i want to do i want to do lettering you know i want to do dope lettering you know uh whatever t-shirts cars tattoos dope dope lettering and i and really i was inspired by uh old tattoo artist in Reno who did like the dopest lettering I've ever seen. And, you know, he had been doing this for years and 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 years. Right. So when someone came into the shop and said, Hey, I wanted to get some, some lettering on me. I wanted to say the word, you know, uh, you know, travel or something. And he goes, Oh, okay. And he just sits down and he knocks out this incredible lettering. That's just perfect. And it's like travel and it's like bendy. And it's like, you know, it's got a big T with, it's like old English looking and he just did it. And I thought I, I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to knock out sick lettering. Um, so yeah, thank you. And yes, red gorilla. I find it, uh, I, I like it because I can concentrate and it's almost like a meditation thing. Like when you're pulling that line with the pen, that's all I'm thinking about. My one focus is just on this one line. You know, I'm just hyper concentrated, get it perfect. It's just like, it's such a methodic like thing. I just really love it. I really love it. And, uh, I can't wait to, uh, I can't wait to do some sick lettering. Fuck yeah. Cause why not? Why not in your mid forties, learn how to do calligraphy. Who told you, who told you it was too late? Fuck them. It's never too late, bro. Never too late. That's it. Mail has been accomplished, but we got beer. We got freaking liquid. We got freaking calligraphy. We got freaking the best t-shirt now that I've ever owned in my life. In fact, Jake Scrapwood, I've never owned like a like a sort of a heather blue t-shirt like this, I'm in. I'm 100% in. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, mail. Okay, cool. Well, shit. Really fun. I I love mail. Thank you for uh thank you for the birthday for the birthday gift and the birthday wishes. Shout out to Reload Vapor. I'm going to try to get some clarification on these crazy engraved RDAs. I don't know anything about them. And we got some Digi flavor stuff, which is pretty dope. So yeah, that's going to wrap up mail. Let's, uh, let's jump into, uh, that's all you get. 
Nope, that's all you need. We're going to try to get back into some of these uh, super chats. New Wave Dave says, 10 years ago today, I picked up a vapor product as an April's Fool's gag and never looked back. Talk about accidental quitting. Vape products are literally the only quit smoking aid in, in the world where people have accidentally quit smoking with it. It's the only one. No one says, well, I bought some nicotine gum and I just accidentally quit smoking with it. You will not hear that story. The story you will hear is stories like New Wave Dave. Oh, yeah, as a joke, I went in, I bought an e-cig, and I accidentally quit smoking. <laughs> Zaddy, uh, hey, Grim, thanks for uh, the share. Just emailed the congressman and asked if we could spend some time. With yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We want to go to re reputable vape shops. Zaddy, do it. I that I can't. Let's start changing minds, man. Let's start changing minds. Noah. Hey, Grim, still MIA, my bad. Just wanted to share some love. Best vape YouTuber to exist. I'm never comfortable saying that, Noah, but thank you so much, bro. I really appreciate that. I, I'm, I'm, I would be fine if, if you said you're the most normal, <laughs> you know, you're the most middle of the road YouTuber that ever exists. And I would go, okay, I, I definitely agree with that. Hamish, fucking a Hamish. Keep fighting the good fight, Hamish. Tim J, how have you been? Uh, Tim J says, listen to the science on COVID-19, but not on vaping. But so what? Oh, he's screwed. Yeah, oh, he's screwed. Miss ya, Nick. Uh, miss you too, Tim J. I hope you're doing really good. I'm working on a little social media video of uh, Andrew Cuomo. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> it's going to be so great. It's, it's, I have a bunch of clips of him saying gibberish, like nonsensy things. And then uh, we're going to tie this into vaping and the Royal College of Physicians. Really, the whole point of this video, I'm going to try to get it edited tomorrow, is just to make Cuomo look as dumb as humanly possible. Yeah. Which isn't honestly that difficult to do. Uh, Richie, hey, Graham, I need an abyss for when Rhode Island lifts its favor ban. Guar, guar, guar. Yeah, fuck yeah, guar, guar, guar. And you do need an abyss. I mean, I'm just going to say it. You probably do. <laughs> Eifer, we have cotton. One hell of a filter. Yeah, that comment from that World Health Organization doctor, that just drove me. I mean, come on. You're defending cigarettes because they have a filter? What the, hell's a, what the hell's the matter with you? I just want to say that to so many people. Like, just what's the matter with you? What the hell's the matter with you? you, you you're defending a cigarette because it has a filter, you fuckstick? Sorry, that's the wrong attitude to have, especially when you're on social media. You don't, don't give in to your emotions. Be like a Jedi. Uh, just wanted to share that I'm getting the Dovepo Odin, sadly, non-DNA. Hey, look, the Dovepo Odin is uh, kick-ass whether or not there's a DNA in it. Vape budget hands, sorry, shed time. Eifer, you never have to apologize for shed time. Eric, well, it's very gracious of you. Get yourself a new Dixon on me. You're part of what's helped me stay smoke-free for three years, and I appreciate that. Thanks for all you do. Happy birthday, bro. Oh, fucking A, Eric. That is... That's very, very cool of you, man. That is a very, very cool of you. I, I will. On a, I'm going to go. I'm The next Dixon drop, I'm getting a Dixon now. Thank you, Eric. That was very cool. Uh, Stan, Heather Blue looks good on you, bro. Thanks for making my drive better. Happy birthday. Stan, Tenacious TX Vapes. I appreciate you more and more every single day. I appreciate people like Stan, people like Frames, people, you know, like a... Uh, like clown and duchess and they're doing their new stream and all of this new vape content coming out. It's awesome. And it's needed. It's needed right now. We need more vape content on YouTube. Um, fishy you come up with something cool with your calligraphy set. I'll get it tattooed. Whoa, fishy. Hang on. That's, that's way too much pressure. You want me to, you want me to do fishy? Like I can do fishy. You want to get fishy tattooed on you, bro? I would do some sick fishy calligraphy as soon as I learn how to do it better. <laughs> I did knock out some rad letters the other day. One, it's I just like, you know, you shed time and you calligraphy and you find a letter that you like doing like an uppercase L or like an uppercase G and you just go, you just start knocking them out one, you know, over and over and over and over muscle memory. It's awesome. I'll, I'm going to work on my Fs now, fishy, for you, Fs. Uh, bake, 
Baked Ham. How you doing, Baked Ham? My wife, Tracy, and I are celebrating 11 years married, April 7th. How about a happy anniversary song? Happy birthday, bro. Uh, okay. Happy anniversary. Na, na, na. Happy anniversary. I feel like that was pretty good for off the top of my head. Uh, Mallory, uh, thank you so much. I love to see more safety and how-to videos on what to use and what to stay away from. Uh, help people on a budget build. Help people with mixing e-juices. I'm on board, Mallory. I'll do whatever I need to do to help people, and all suggestions are, are welcome. Honestly, Mallory, thank you for being here, Mallory. Thank you for being. Uh, thank you for fighting the good fight. Let's. Uh, I want to retro vape. It's six ten. We have so much more to go. Let's retro vape. I don't even care. Call the cops. So I think the way that we're going to do the rest of this vlog is going to be uh, the such as. Hi, welcome to Retro Vaping. I have a double Retro Vape tonight. I don't know why we're running long, but I just wanted to do two things because I grabbed out two cool things and I wicked them both up today. And I've been kind of anxious, like sitting here getting ready, like I want to vape them, vape them. One of them is going to be a series, a series vape. And the other one is going to be this. In fact, shit. Shut up, Siri. Uh, this, the first one is going to be this. Does anybody remember the Aura RDA? Aura? Yeah, this is the Aura. It had that weird clampy deck with like the, the step down on it. It had Kennedy style airflow that came up from the bottom under that Ultem and kind of went whoop, like you can kind of see it going straight at your coils. It was real goony. It was real Kennedy-y. And it had a airflow on the bottom that was just... Here, you're not going to be able to see this because it's so tiny down here. It was just um, Ultem. Can you see this? It was just Ultem on the bottom. Daniel, DJ LSB Vapes, the guy that I never would have guessed would have released a dripper, just fucking released a dripper sometime in 2017. I remember being at ECC and sitting in the ECC squad house, the squad house, and we shot this review. Like, uh, here, I'm going to use Pony on Acid. And uh, we shot my little review for the, uh, for the Aura RDA. It wasn't credible. It wasn't incredible. But it did have a cool, a few cool little, like, airflow options on it. You could turn off the airflow on the bottom or the top, or run just the bottom, or run just the top, or close it all off. I don't know if you really wanted to do that, but it had a few different options, or you could kind of run the airflows together. It had side-in airflow and bottom-up airflow. It was a weird RDA, and it was just so unexpected. Just completely, completely unexpected from Daniel, because I never... I don't know. I never pictured him being like an RDA guy. I always pictured Daniel vaping like, uh, you know, restricted lung, hemo restricted lungy stuff, or I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I just had preconceived notions in my head, uh, about, uh, Daniel DJ LSB vapes, but. Oh, come on. Measure again, measure again, measure again. Fucking yes. Ah, vape wars are happening. I remember liking this RDA, but I also remember not really liking this RDA. It was one of those like, yeah, it vapes, you know? And it has similar airflow and flavor to a Kennedy, but I already have a Kennedy. It does have side airflow, you know, like other RDAs. So you can see there is bottom airflow and then there's a side airflow and it's got this secondary airflow cap on there so you could run one you could run both i'm going to turn off the top airflow because i did not like the top airflow did anybody else experience have an experience with the aura rda i noticed some people calling it a banger crimson just got one like two weeks ago what do you think of it crimson 
Let's, let's go back in time a little bit. I actually have not even vaped this probably since 2017. So cheers, Aura RDA. Uh, it's a 0.16. Uh, let's do 70 watts on the Bogan Odin, uh, the DNA 250C version. Yeah, have loud airflow. Real good flavor. Whoa, I don't remember the flavor being that good. That is a pretty stellar flavor right there. Airflow is a little bit loud. Do you hear the, the volume of the airflow? Additionally, the airflow feels uneven. I feel like I'm pulling way more airflow in through the right side than I am through the left side, and that bothers me. When the airflow doesn't feel even, it does not feel even in here. Yeah, a lot of people hate it on the Aura. A lot of. But I turn off the top. I'm, do, I'm turned off the top right now, Ray. Top's turned off, and I'm only rocking the bottom Kennedy Airflow. It feels uneven. The flavor, nice. Nice flavor. Really nice flavor. Dang, Aura. Dang, Aura. You know how loud that airflow is, though? That volume of airflow would almost be a deal breaker for me. Do I have anything else that's that loud on my desk that I vape regularly? Let's compare it to the recoil. This one actually, the recoil has like a little whistle to it. Just voluminous, just voluminous and loud. Honestly, the flavor's great on this, at least with just the bottom airflow open. Let's run all four airflows, bottom and top. So loud, so airy. It's just real loud and real airy. The top airflow, when you turn that top airflow on, it's like a flavor volume button. It just goes down. Your flavor just disappears when you turn that top airflow on. But if you rock it with just the bottom airflow, <laughs> good. Damn, you get some good flavor. Yeah. Well, whatever. It's shout out to Daniel DJ LSB Vapes 2017. He released the Aura RDA that isn't necessarily a banger from top to bottom, but it can produce some pretty nice flavor off that bottom airflow if you don't mind the volume. It's very bleh, your juice friendly because it has the raised airflow kind of on the side. It's not quite Kennedy coming straight at you from underneath. Tasty. Damn, damn tasty. All right. Fun. Fun, Daniel. I haven't vaped this aura in so long. Just feels fun to vape it again. I like getting out old vape gear. Now, the other one that I'm going to do, the other one that I'm going to do, do you even series, bro? Let me shoot. Let me find the video. This. Boom. Anybody want to throw a guess as to what that is down there? It's going on a stacked tube mech. It's going on a stacked tube mech. Yo, 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 patrons, you guys will know exactly what this is. Exactly what this is. No questions asked. It's glowing nice and evenly. This is what we're looking at right now. It came from Comp Vape. Comp Vape. This is the seminal RDA. Does anybody remember Comp Vape? And does anybody remember the seminal RDA? Comp Vape was an interesting company because they released the El Cabron RDA that my patrons reminded me the name of, the El Cabron RDA. And I kind of liked it. It came out in 2013 and I wasn't really cloud chasing back then. I didn't like the Dark Horse either. I just didn't like cloud chasing RDAs, but I had this. And I ran across Kent Twisted Messes on Instagram and I saw his builds and I just hit him up and said, hey, can you put a build in this? And he's like, definitely. I didn't even know the guy. And he just was like, yeah. And so I sent him my El Cabron RDA. And 
he put a fused Clapton in it, you know, and it wasn't even anything like crazy, fancy or special. It was just a fused Clapton, but it made me love that atomizer way more than I had before, way more. And so, because Comp Vape saw Kent building on their atomizer, they approached Kent about doing the Twisted Messes, the original Twisted Messes atomizer. And the original Twisted Messes atomizer looked, a, it was a little bit Comp Vape-y. And after the Twisted Messes atomizer released from Comp Vape, the two RDAs that they released after the Twisted Messes were kind of Twisted messes -y. Kind of Twisted messes -y. In that, this was a two-post deck, which the TM, you know, that was not a two-post deck, but it had that same unthread off your top airflow ring right there. In fact, if I covered up this logo and just showed you this ring, you could mistake that for a Twisted Messes RDA. Airflow ring that Kent made popular, that same exact, like, I don't know, cartoon bone-shaped airflow on there. Then after the then after the TM, so they released the Twisted Messes, and then they released the thir seven, Ten Heavens, Nine Hells, or something like that. And it was essentially like a Twisted Messes RDA. It it was a it was like a it was like a clone of a Twisted Messes RDA, almost, almost. And then after that, they released this banger, the Seminole RDA. What I have in here is twenty two. 20 fucking fucking gauge is this 20 gauge i think this is 20 gauge nichrome and i did a it's like a 13 or like a why 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 i love it when mech mods are dual or you know stacked 21700s and then when you put stacked 21700s in it just rattles all over the place so let's try other batteries. Yay. Let's try these. Oops. So the way that this works, positive goes up, positive goes up. This one goes into this one. And then I can put some juice on this and then we can vape it on a stack because this round wire build surprisingly came out to a, a 0 0.28 which is look that's 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 pretty well into series land i usually shoot for like a 0.3 oh secure batteries secure batteries now we just need some juice what juice we still have to do a very random liquid tasting too and holy shit here's what we'll do i got an idea I got an idea. Don't even trip. Let's throw some uh, let's throw some yak mango on here. I haven't ha haven't had the yak mango in anything in a while, so let's throw some yak mango on here. In fact, I believe I could fly. I believe I could touch the sky any time of year. Dun dun dun. dun. Dun, dun, dun. I believe I can fly. Omboy OC, everybody. These are juiced up with some Omboy OC mango. Oh, God, it's not firing. What did I do wrong? Son of a bitch. I fucking hate stacked tube mechs. Biggest pieces of shit ever. Sorry, I'm not, I don't mean to say that about Merle's mods. They make great mods. This has got to be user error, right? issues there no issues there Is this 18650 charged maybe that's the problem let's just put the switch on and if this one battery fires are these fucking batteries just dead do we have dead batteries in here how old please Okay, let's try on all 
right. Well, we might not be vaping. Uh, we might not be vaping any series tonight. Might not be vaping any series tonight. Because I can't get these fucking thing to work. Tried three sets of batteries now. Three sets of batteries. Just, just... You hear the batteries rattling around in there? No, of course they're not going to fucking fire. Of course not. Why would they fire? Maybe it's a fancy mech. It can only use one type of battery. Okay. What else do I have that I could run this on? Boom! Here's a mod from Suicide Mods that I know will work. Because I've used it already many times. Ask yourselves, is this even worth it? Unscrew the fire button? I'll, un I'll unscrew your fire button. It was working earlier. What do you mean, unscrew the fire button? What does that even mean? You can't unscrew the fire button, bro. Oh, yeah, you can. I don't care. I, I got too mad at it, and I'm over it. I'm giving up. That's just who I am. <laughs> I know, it's a 21700 tube. Sorry, I'm not trying to get all, like, you know, riled up and crazy here. Just goofing off. So we're going to switch it to the Suicide Suicide mod. Suicide mods, suicide mod. If you want to know why they're called suicide mods, you can go to their website, learn all about it. Okay. Nope. Fucking A. Did I do this wrong? Nope. Okay, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? I just have this set up. What am I doing wrong? What the fuck am I doing wrong? Okay, I'm giving up. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? Do you thread it? Okay, maybe you thread into there. Do you thread into there? Nope. You thread into there. Why is this battery so big? Okay, that threaded in. Okay, we're getting there. Look, we're getting there. And I apologize. I really just want to vape this series. Okay, here, before we can test it. Okay. 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 Suicide mods for the win. Copper tube. Ah, Dilrin sleeve that pinched my finger. Ah, mech clacks. That's what we're calling this? Mech clacks. It's one of those things like, I feel like we're already running long at 6.30 right now. And we still have another segment to do. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to stress myself out over the Merle's mod. Well, shout out to Merle's mod that I just couldn't get working. Suicide mods works perfect right out of the gate. Could not get the Merle's mod working. Side fire here on this guy. Side fire. Look at that explosion of vapor. Now we can all look forward to me coughing excessively. Yeah. All right, Seminole. Well, this was the longest retro vaping in the history of time. You should check out Vapor's Cloud Scepter Mech and Stack. It's a banging setup. Oh. Seminole, 22 gauge, like 19 wrap on both sides. Cheers. Yep, hits great. Hits great, lots of airflow. This is that that's what a series build needs. I don't do series that often. I'm getting some crazy good crackle with this. And the airflow is honestly awesome. Awesomely smooth. No, I don't, Josh. Clearly, I don't. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a punch in the face. That is a punch in the GD face right there. Um, just hot. Hot, warm vapor. Yeah, hot, warm vapor. But the Seminole, look, it can house a series build. It's got tons of airflow for series builds. It's got fucking heatsink fins at the top for series builds. 
So on a scale of one to 10, how anticlimactic was that, that I spent 20 minutes setting up a mech? It's, that's great. I kind of miss series. I don't know why I've suddenly become like Cloud Chaser 9000. Still vaping. Awesome. All right. Well, my original plan for this was to put it on the Noisy Cricket, and then I realized this is like a 26 millimeter atomizer, so it's not going to fit on the Noisy Cricket. So maybe we'll have to get out the Noisy Cricket for another series retro vape like in a few weeks. But the Seminole, if anybody is on the fence about getting a Seminole, <laughs> if anybody's on the fence about getting a uh, an RDA from you know forever ago, the Seminole still kind of holds up. The, honestly, the Aura still holds up. If you avoid that top airflow, the Aura still holds up. But the Seminole definitely, definitely holds up. Yeah, dude. Seminole, Seminole. And Yox mango tastes awesome in this. I love it. I love the crap out of this. All right. Well, I think there were some super chats that came in, but I want to hurry up and get to the last segment and then we can do all the super chats at the end. And what I'm going to do right now is we're going to combine getting to know Grim Green and the very random liquid tasting. I know it's going to be weird, but uh, let's hear both bumpers right now. Sorry, I was rocking out. Let's taste a very random liquid and let's get to know Grim Green a little bit. We've been doing uh, random liquid tastings for, a, for forever in the vlog. In fact, if you've been here for a random liquid tasting before, just go ahead and smash that like button. It would really help me out. We've been voting. And I feel like this is a good break off point because I'm not going to have a vlog next week. So the following week, we can just start fresh with three brand new e-liquids in the very random liquid tasting, which means we're going to finally wrap up the competition that we've been having like since, I don't even know, since November of these same liquids. Ugh. But they finally all got vaped and the last one, due up tonight, no voting allowed, it's Juice My Way. It's so very good. Shout out to Juice My Way, yo yo a to ya. They got a group on Facebook as well. But we're finally gonna taste this, finally. Juice my way, so very good. And that way, look, that means there's nothing sitting in the queue, there's nothing waiting to be voted on for a random liquid tasting, and we can hit the ground running, not next week, but the week after, with three brand new liquids. I feel like that's win-win. I might have to bring Jubbies back. I really feel like I should bring Jubbies back. <laughs> Is there something crackling? Do the testing grounds? No, listen. We're going to add the testing grounds to the to the rotation, you know. I feel like I have to bring Jubbies back, really, at this point. So very good. Here, hang on. Let me do a uh, let me do a quick knuckle here. Hmm. This could be This could be so very good. We're going to be tasting this on a Mother Truck and Jake, Jake Scrapwood original mod, one of my favorite mods like literally of all time. I use it constantly. And my favorite RDA of tall time. It's the original recipe recoil. These are some, uh, you know, aliens in here. I can only assume that they're Turk aliens, but that's probably, I mean, that is probably pretty accurate. So very good. See if I can, no, it's going to give me the temp protect. I don't know why it always gives me the temp protect, Jake Scrapwood. I don't know why. It's a 0.3 and it won't let me fire it at 55 watts. It says temp protect. And I go, okay. <laughs> what? It's a 0.3 at 50 watts, you DNA 250C. Let's get a, let's get a fresh atomizer reading on here. I know it says no atomizer, no atomizer, no atomizer. Gives me the temp protect every single time. It's infuriating. And not all DNAs do it. This one and another one does it constantly to me. 
Maybe it just needs to be uh, tuned. Okay, yes. Oh, oh, it's letting me fire it. Nope, said temp protect. Temp protect. All right, Jake Scrapwood. I'm going to have to get into eScribe or something and figure this stupid thing out. Not the, not the mod. The mod isn't stupid. The mod is not stupid. So instead, we're going to put this in a hexome. Fuck yeah, hexome. I got out my uh, like tattoo flash art hexome. It looks Christmassy to me, but I like rocking it. It's red and white. It's got tattoo flash art on it. And I got this out. And it's just been sitting on my desk because I've been desiring to vape a, uh, a hexome again. So here we go. 0.3 on a hexome. Perfect. Lee, not the real Gerard Butler. Tell me that that's not perfect. That's perfect. Yep, that's perfect. Let me adjust the wattage a little bit. Uh. Dead air. Dead air. All right. All right, juice my way. So I'm going to have a few toots of this. And when I sit back to vape on it, we're going to listen to some, uh, we're going to listen to the final, we're going to listen to the final, uh, you know, uplifted Christian metal month here on, uh, on the Grim Green YouTube. We've been listening to my old band from way back in the day, the uplifted overtly Christian, uh, sort of metal. I call it death metal, but it wasn't so much death metal as it was just metal. We were trying to incorporate too many different styles. You know, it was one of those things like, oh, we love all these death metal bands. Oh, we also love Rob Zombie and all of these industrial bands like Ministry and Clank and Circle of Dust. And so let's try to incorporate some of that. And then we go, oh, but we also love all of these like hardcore bands. Oh, let's sound more like Focal Point. Let's sound more like Training for Utopia. Let's sound like these hardcore bands. And so what you get at the end is the uplifted. I was in this band for, I, I couldn't even tell you, years, years and years, decades even, decades. I know, I got to plug that into eScribe and fix it. I will, I will. And I'm not, that's not a Jake Scrapwood issue. That's a, that's a, that's a grim green issue. Here we go. Let's try some Barry Good real quick before we get to the Christian metal. All right. All right. So very good. Well, I'm going to sit back with this for a second. And the song, what song do I even have tonight? Oh, this is the, this is probably the most overtly Christian song. If, if last week um, you didn't feel the Holy Spirit and you didn't get saved this week, you will. After you listen to this, you're definitely going to heaven. I'll see you there. This is a song called With Uplifted Hands. And it's, like I said, really super religious, really super Christian. And the, you know, this comes from going to church. When you go to church a lot, one of the church, uh, you know, kind of tropes that they do is, uh, you know, this, you know, the testify, raising your hands to the Lord, to the Christ. And so we wrote a whole song about this. And uh, it's one of my favorite songs. It's got a real like anthem chorus, you know, it's real anthem It's meant to like sing along to. And uh, people at shows who had seen us a bunch before, that they would sing along, and it always felt really, really good, you know. So from, uh, I, let's see, I think the video footage that doesn't line up with the audio, same as last week. This is just us on stage playing a completely different song. Uh, I think this is actually a show from Reno, Nevada. I think this is a show from Reno, Nevada. This was... Yeah, this was a show from Reno, Nevada, and I'm not in the video a lot. I'm kind of over on, on the right side, and you can see me, like, stumbling around sometimes, and I like to, you know, do this kind of thing sometimes. I like to hatch it, you know, with your guitar, you hatch it. I like to do that a lot. So without any further ado, I'm going to sit back. I'm going to enjoy this. Um, we are going to listen to With Uplifted Hands by my old man, The Uplifted. Enjoy. Cheers. I'll be Clean intro. Clean intro. That was revolutionary. There I am. Look at me. Yep. Well done, Nick. You hear that bass, Michelle Lynn? Yeah. 
It... Just wait. Jim does the majority of the vocals on this. Were you? You're all saved now, by the way. All going to heaven. You didn't know it? Yep. We're all going to heaven now. It's okay. They have vaping there. God's cool with tobacco harm reduction, believe it or not. 
Uh, that was it. That was uh, that was the uplifted. That was like our anthem song with uplifted hands. It's got that real like, you know, in the chorus. It's like real anthemy and singy. We couldn't write a song that was under seven minutes long. It was just an issue that we had. Um, all of our songs were always like seven, eight minutes long because we couldn't. We didn't know how to write short songs. We, it's it's really really difficult to write a short metal song because. You, when you're a when you're in a metal band and you're a riff guy, you know, and I'm a riff guy, I love a good riff. It's one of the reasons why I listen to like Crowbar because their riffs just like literally melt your muscles off of your bone. Crowbar riffage, and so we would write a cool riff, and we'd want to keep going back to it. You know, it's like oh, we only did that one part once, and that's such a cool riff. Like we should do go back to that like three or four more times. Oh yeah, okay. Of course. Let's do a chorus and then we'll do that same riff that we really, really like. And then we'll do the, you know, and then we'll go back to that same riff that we really, really like. And then we'll even do the opener riff again. We would get riffs that we really, really like that we just wanted to keep playing. It's like, oh, you want to hear this for another eight minutes? Such a good riff, right? <laughs> we were really full of ourselves, but we just couldn't write a short song. They all were long. All were long songs. All of them. So I think that is going to end like the, the, the uplifted, maybe we'll, maybe we'll revisit it someday, maybe with some really older, older songs. All the stuff I've been playing you is like newer, <laughs> newer in that it was recorded in like 99 instead of 97, you know, like two years difference. Um, but yeah, maybe we'll revisit the uplifted again. Uh, we'll get back into the records and add and stuff to the Grim Green Spotify playlist, but, uh, it, it was a, it's still a big part of my life. Like it was a big part of my life for a really long time. Like I, one of the reasons why I was so hesitant now here, we're getting deep into grim green. One of the reasons I was so hesitant to do this full time is because I, I, I tried to be a musician full time. You know, I spent a bunch of years holding down whatever weird odd jobs I could get 7-Eleven and car washes and things and spending 100% of my time playing bass and going to band practice and playing shows. And I just wanted to be a musician. I'm like, all I want to do is write music for the rest of my life. And when I did that and you didn't, I didn't succeed after, you know, a decade of doing it, I kind of went, well, lesson learned. Don't try, you know, <laughs> just go get a job that you like and live out your life. You tried to be a rock star. It didn't quite work. Congratulations. And so when it came to this, when I was like, do I want to try, am I going to quit my job to do this full time? Scared. I was terrified. I was truly and honestly, truly and honestly terrified to do this full time, but here we are. Look, here we are. And now we're listening to my old death metal band. It's all come full circle. It's so great. Back to juice my way. So very good. Here's how I would describe this juice. Dan, I know you're on the edge of your seat right now. Been sitting a few months, fingers crossed that it's still enjoyed. Uh, to go for quality, flavor, and longevity isn't always easy. You're the man. Yeah, I mean, it should last more than two months, right? I mean, I feel like it, that's, I mean, two months, sometimes I crack bottles and give them like a two month steep before I even, before I even vape them. So I feel like this should be prime juice or prime. So very good. This is berry packed. There is some distinct berry flavors that I get. Like there's like, you know, the raspberry seeds, you kind of get that sensation out of this. It avoids being cough syrupy or tussiny at all. Sometimes berry liquids can kind of fall into that Robitussin kind of ugh, cough syrup kind of thing. Uh, such is not the case with this. It's a really fresh sort of berry, blueberry, blackberry, raspberries, all kind of mixing in there together. And you get a little bit of like that, uh, I don't know, seeds, kind of like real natural sort of seed flavor from it. I don't know if this would be like an all day vape for me, but it is, it's pretty delightful right now. I could see like a slight, like if I have to be honest, which I do have to be honest, there is a slight like candle sensation, like a waxy candle sensation going on in here. It's not like so negative that it would make me never vape this liquid. But it is part. It is part of the flavor profile. It's like it's like fresh, crispy, 
you know, out of the ground berries and you're just drinking a berry smoothie. And then it's like, oh, I snuck a candle in there too. And you're like, oh, okay. Well, the rest of it's so good. I'll just keep drinking it. I don't, I don't mind the candle flavor. It's like a candle berry smoothie. That's what I'm going to call it, bro. Sorry, Dan. It's a candle berry smoothie, not overtly candle. It's like, a little bit of candle. It's like when you go to Jamba Juice and you're like, can you just put like half a scoop of protein in? It's like half a scoop of candle? Okay, just a half a scoop. I mean, it's delicious. I really like it. But it is, it is a little uh, candly, little candly. All right, well, we have officially uh, run, uh, I think the second longest vlog of all time because I won't shut up. So here's what we're gonna do literally right now. Let's just start winding down, you know? Whew, let's pump the brakes. I feel like I've been going just, ah, just crazy. So let's get, uh, let's do some of the rest of these super chats, you guys. And uh, again, just fucking thank you for coming to hang out. It's kind of like my birthday party. I feel like I'm hanging out with all my friends on my birthday party and that's, uh, that's just fun. I'm just, I just had a lot of fun tonight and, and, and you guys are directly, directly fucking responsible for that. I hope you take some responsibility for my fun times that I had tonight. Uh, Eifer was in there. Uh, Eifer said he called the cops and now they're mad at <laughs> Don't literally call the cops, bro. The cops are here. Uh, you've helped keep, uh, 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 Polar Opie, how you doing? You helped keep off the cancer stick since 2014. I received my ex-smoker shirt this week and I'm rocking it proudly. Awesome. Pol thank you. That's so rad. Thank you. I mean, I, I'm, 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 I'm overjoyed. I could have been part of your, uh, of your journey to becoming an ex-smoker. There he is. Southern Comfort checking in. Thank you for checking in, bro. You like to punch things in the face? What things do you like to punch in the face? I could think of three people I'd like to punch in the face right now. I don't miss series. I vape series. I know. And Southern Comfort, I was thinking about you when I was setting up the retro vape today because there's there's a few series people I know. Duchess uh, and Southern Comfort are like the series people that I know. Maybe Bogan does some series too. This is for this is for Southern Comfort series all day, bro. Yeah. Wow. Give it to me. Series. It's a whole experience, man. And that's the great thing about vaping. Tell me that's not the best part about vaping is that you can vape however you want. You want to vape this? This is a sub tank. You can definitely. But this, you want to rebuild? You can. You don't want to rebuild? You don't have to. You want a lot of wattage? You don't want any wattage? You want very little wattage? You can have all of those things. You want a really sweet liquid? You want not a less sweet liquid? You can have both of those things too. You want a lot of clouds? You can have it. You want not much clouds? You can have it. You want a lot of airflow? Sure. You want not a lot of airflow? You can have that too. Literally any way that you can possibly think to vape can be accomplished. And that is what's so fucking awesome about vaping. I uh, appreciate that Southern comfort. Derek, jubbies. <laughs> Never going to hear the end of job is my son wanted me to work out with him, but I couldn't a well, one top side. And six months later, we're back in the gym. My son couldn't be happier. Happy birthday. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. MMC. Hell yeah. MMC. That's awesome. Whoa. The juggler. Very gracious of you. Uh, happy birthday. Taco bell on me. Did you see that? The <laughs> juggler. Thank you. Get the Cholito. The Cholito. Chris Pie 5, stay excellent. Absolutely, to juggle up, bro. Thank you. Happy birthday. Hashtag Jubbies. Hope you have a good week. I hope you have a good week, SVK Vapes. I hope you have a rocking week. Merry Christmas, birthday boy. <laughs> Duchess. Thank you, bro. And a Merry Christmas to you as well. Southern Comfort. I saw ministry in 2015 in Rockville, Jacksonville, Florida. I, bragging rights, bro. I have not ever got to see ministry, despite ministry being, I mean, there's a few specific albums in particular of ministries that I just go crazy for. I'm super jealous. Steve, uh, it's so awesome to see you tasting what's become my favorite of all time e-liquids. Yo, yo, happy birthday from all of us at Juice My Way. Fuck yeah, Steve. Enjoy it. Vape it, bro. Happy birthday. Looking forward to hearing more of your music. Ray Sunshine or Death Ray Roth. <laughs> bro, okay, I like that. I like that username. And uh, 
Yeah, we'll we'll, re- we'll revisit the uplifted some more. We definitely will. In fact, we should play we should play some old Swamp Donkey on here. Got some old Swamp Donkey tracks you might be into as well. Um, Eifer, badass. I'd totally come to see you live and buy a CD. And I'm definitely not a Christian. Yeah, you know, I, that's fine. I'm not either. A lot of people are, and that's cool too. Um, but yes, I I I liked my band. I liked the band that I was in. I was a fan of the music that we were writing and. I had that same point of view, and I would tell that to Jim all the time. Like, dude, if I wasn't in this band, I would like this band. I would come see us, and I would buy the T-shirt. Uh, Dan, there he is, Juice My Way. Been sitting a few months. That's right. Still good. Hashtag Juice My Way. Hashtag FTB Army. How's the FTB shirts fitting? Here's the thing about the FTB shirts. You need some screen-printed shirts, my man. Those are large iron-on graphics, and it's like it's like wearing a piece of plastic on my face or on my on my chest. It's like wearing a piece of plastic. They fit great. They fit great, and I love the message behind them. Love it. New Wave Dave, killer song, Nick. I like the verse where he says, give Nick five bucks. I snuck that in there, New Wave Dave. I knew I could sense in the future. <laughs> How meta would that be? Uh, Brandon, that's very gracious of you. Uh, made it just in time to say Merry Birthmas. Uh, can't wait to watch this tomorrow. Brandon, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. Bump that fist if you enjoyed the vlog. Kevin Yum. What are you doing, Kevin Yum? Phil and Dimitri were a little butt hurt. You weren't getting at them. Matt's chilling at Phil's was hilarious with Vanessa Crank calling. Yeah, that was really good. Uh, Matt on the Smoker Show, really very good. Really very good. Uh, someday, you know, someday I'll go to Florida. I'll hang out with Phil. It's whatever. Southern Comfort. Oh, you sweet. Look at your email for me. I will. What's up with the automated email responses? Yeah, it's just a thing that happens sometimes, Southern Comfort. It's completely boring, but when I get overwhelmed because (sighs) I'm literally just a one-man show. My wife is a tremendous help with the merch store, but as far as Grim Green goes, everything is on me from thumbnails to, to, to all the segments, to reviews, to everything, to organizing my office, to keeping things in track, to staying on top of my SEO, to answering emails, to DMs, to all this stuff. It's just me. And so occasionally if I get overwhelmed with emails, I have to put on my notification reminder so that people who email me don't think I'm just ignoring them. Because I had emails sitting there from like February 3rd that w- of just someone just waiting, just you know, and I feel bad because it takes me a really long time to get back. So I put the, I put the vacation responder on there so that people know I'm not ignoring them. You know, that's, that's really what it comes down to, but, uh, we're done. Hang on, hang on. We can't be done. We're done. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's the second longest vlog. It's another record. It's another record breaking vlog. Let me take a quick look and make sure, uh, Make sure I didn't forget anything. I don't think I did. Here, let me finish off this new Glarus right here. Cheers, you guys. Uh, Let's see. Did I forget anything else? No? Got that? Got all that in? Did I get the... Yeah. Dang. You guys, I think we're done. Uh, I think we're done. And uh, God damn it, Glance. Look, you're going to have to sit here while I talk about vaping, okay? Thank you for coming out. Thank you for making Thursday night the best night of the week for me personally. Uh, I really appreciate it. I love the vlog and I love that you guys coming out for the vlog and we're going to keep doing this until I'm dead in the ground. That's my promise. That's my promise. Things are shifting. Despite what Stanton Glantz says, things are shifting and important, respected, and powerful people are getting behind vaping and dragging Mike Bloomberg's dumb Muppet face just over the coals. And it's a good time right now. It could be a better time right now, obviously, right? We could be like in the position like the UK right now. But we're in the position we're in, and things are changing, things are shifting, and as long as we keep this fight going, it, it's unstoppable. Vaping is, is, is a, global, a global movement, uh, and it is far too popular and far too effective to just be pushed off into the night. And I say, no, I will not let that happen. So thank you guys for coming out again. I love it. And, uh, thank you for all the, for all the birthday wishes. It really means a lot to me. And I'm glad I got to celebrate like a little bit of a birthday time with you. Happy birthday to Eric. Happy birthday to Beecher. Happy birthday to all of the birthdays. And, uh, I won't see you guys next week unless you're part of the yo yo cool kids club. Then yeah, we're going to hang out for sure. But I won't see any of you YouTube folks until, uh, 
the next week. But we're going to hit the ground running, and uh, I'm going to enjoy... I'm going to enjoy hanging out and watching Godzilla movies this week. I really am. Uh, Got one last super chat. Let me wrap this up. Eric, happy birthday, Nick. I'm seven years smoke-free. Eric. Eric, I like that more than I like my birthday. I like that you're seven years smoke-free more more than I like my birthday. I'm just going to say that, Eric. Thank you, guys, um, again, so much. Remember, no matter what anybody tells you, no matter what anybody tells you, I need a Bloomberg one now. That's what I need. I need Bloomberg and his dumb Muppet face like over here in this corner. Just going, you know, some fucking Bloomberg face. Remember, no matter what anybody tells you, vaping is at least, at bare minimum, 95% less harmful than burning deadly, deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes. So yeah, truly and honestly, no matter what's in your hand, let's keep on vaping, you guys. Be excellent to each other always. I'll see you in a week. Peace.